all right looks like live now so yeah hey guys how's it going up y'all doing well let me just uh join the voice chat see who's here already uh let's have a look oh nice we got uh, blaze alexander and shower here excellent let's go and say hello all right hmm. hey guys hello. hello everyone so how's it going Oh, good. Nice to see you all here. Um, so hope you're doing well. Uh, Blaze, he's got me on mute for a bit. No problem. Yeah, yeah, he told me yes, background noise. Yeah. No problem. So how's how's it going then, guys? Doing well. Doing pretty good. That's nice to hear. How about you, Alexander? Uh, quite well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, today's been pretty good for me because I went to Manchester again. It was it was pretty fun, and uh, once again, you know, had pizza for lunch. So yeah, pizza time. Okay. Yeah, where's Ozzy? Is he not here yet? Uh, yeah. Didn't you say he was at a mall today? Yeah. Or maybe something. Hey, Black Eagle man, what's up? <laughs> hmm. Hope he's okay. I know what usually is here. Right, I'm gonna start the stream, isn't he? He must be busy today. Hmm. So yeah, got some pretty cool things today as well, you know, from Manchester. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah, and uh, today is gonna be a very special stream. It is, yeah. Hmm. Well, Black Eagle, I prefer that you don't ask me anything about Chainsaw React because I don't watch his channel. It is right. Yeah, because I lost respect for him because of the way he treated Jay. He was very mean to him. So I, don't, I no longer have a video of his anymore now. Yeah, I never watched his videos. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. Because he, he turned his back on Jay when Jay needed him. Yeah, screw that guy. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I also have ice cream as a snack. It's pretty nice and I love ice cream. Yeah, vanilla this one it is tonight. I like to keep it simple. That's my favorite ice cream for that, you know, keeping it simple. Yeah, vanilla is also my favorite. That's cool. High five, Shadow. Hmm. And Alexander, do you have like a unique flavor of ice cream that's your favorite? Um, well, I like my favorite. Well, it's, I mean, I can make a whole. I don't know, podcast or something about ice cream, because I have so much information about ice cream that I can share. So, it, yes, it is very unique, certainly, yeah. in terms of my favorite. That's cool. I mean, what what would you say is, is the one flavor that you love to eat, you know, nonstop, you know, like, you never get bored of eating? Well, I eventually get bored of eating any food. So there's really? no food in the world that I would eat nonstop, because mm. I do get bored of, of mm. food. But... When I was in Tomsk, Tomsk has one of my favorite ice cream brands. It's only, you can only find it, it's like little shops mm. with the called 33 penguins, 33 penguins, uh, on Russian is called, of course, and all of these, and you can only find them in Tomsk, no other city, and they're oh, wow. all across the city, these little, little shops, and they have some of the most unique and tasty, delicious, unique flavors. It's amazing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So a very unique flavor for Tomsk. Yeah, like I tried this this summer. I tried a new flavor from theirs, which I really like. It's a combination of blueberry and passion fruit with uh with chia seeds and a special kind of blue tea. Oh, blue tea in ice cream. That's pretty interesting. I will yeah. say. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. I never imagine. I never, never imagine blue. I never imagine blue tea being an ice cream. Hmm. Yeah, but um, is it good? It was amazing. I, that, uh, yes, hmm. it was good. It was very tasty. I recommend it to anyone. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Definitely, can uh, find some. Well, it's in Tom's shadow, so you may need to go to, to yeah, Tom's for it. Ever, yeah, I mean, if I were travel to Russia. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, hello, Liv. Nice to see you. I hope you're doing well. Hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah, so Charlie, if you ever got, consider going to Tom's one day, that's definitely a go-to place for you, isn't it? Yeah. 
Does your area in Norway have any unique ice cream, Shadow, that's only unique to your area in Norway? I don't know. Mm. I, I mean, would you say that the ice cream brands in Norway are like, you know, global brands you can get all over the world? I think so. I mean, one that I know is in several countries is one called uh, Wally. I think it's called Walls. I think it is Walls. Because I think they do Cornettos, don't they? Yeah. I'm not sure they have in Norway, though. Hmm. How oh, interesting. So I haven't seen that. Yeah. I enjoy more than cake. That's very big as well. Hmm. Dragon's fruit ice cream blaze. Well, um, I like dragon fruit because I had it as, as a snack in China when I was on a school trip in China. So, yeah, it's pretty nice fruit, dragon fruit. Mm hmm. I actually have a dragon fruit smoothie right now oh. in the royal fridge. Coincidence? I think not. Mm. <laughs> but I can't drink it, unfortunately, because um, I only realized after buying it, when I looked at, I checked the table of contents or like, you know, the ingredients, and I saw that they have almond milk in it. And almond milk? To almonds and all types of nuts. So I only realized afterwards that I can't drink it. Um, oh, so so you, so you, you got us moving me right now, but you can't drink it. Oh, dear. No, no, I cannot drink it. No. That's a big shame, Matt. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. Well, that's very kind of you to say, Donny. I appreciate your kind words. Um, I just do my best on my channel for all of you, really. I just do my best. All I can say is I hope everyone enjoys what I do. Yeah, of course. Of course, we all, we all do that. Yeah. Um, hmm. I was wanting to do well, yeah. As far as I know, guys, I'm not, I'm allergic to, I'm not allergic to any food at all, as far as I know. Well, you're a very lucky man. Yeah, oh, Aussie's here, nice. Uh, mate, uh, I don't think there's any food that I'm allergic to either. Well, you must be very lucky then. Oh, so yeah, how's it going, Aussie? Good, and um, what just happened? Oh, you're just talking about uh, ice cream and different, different and, um, and yeah, and, uh... yeah, we're, we're just talking about how you know, um, allergies, Aussie, and I just have allergies to any food as far as I know. I mean, I'm not allergic to any food either. Mm. As far as I know. Hmm. Hmm. So, Ozzy, have you been up to anything at all this week? How's, um, how's your time off been due to a hurricane in Florida? It's been getting better. That's good. Are you back, are you back at school next week? Yep. Oh, nice. And did you get did you get any any homework to do, Ozzy, while you were off? Yeah, I did. At least I won't have any holiday holidays breaks being taken off. Hmm, that's good. Did it remind you a lot of doing doing that work during the lockdown in twenty twenty? Yep. Oh God, was that a pain for you? Yeah, sort of. Not really. Yeah, because, like, when you're at home, sometimes it, it can be hard to, like, you know, concentrate when you're when you're in the home environment because you haven't got a discipline of a teacher, have you? Not really. Yeah, because, you know, when, when you've got a teacher with you, you know, they, they help you concentrate, don't they? Whereas, you know, when you're on your own, it's hard to concentrate, isn't it? I would agree with that, yes. Because, Alexander, yeah. don't, don't you have a tutor when you do your homeschooling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I assume that you are very well concentrated with your work, aren't you? When, when you got a tutor with you, haven't you? Yeah, well, I can not be because if I'm asked a question and then I'm daydreaming or flying in another universe somewhere catching butterflies, mm. and then I'm asked a question and I see, sit there without answering, then, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem. Be awkward and not very pleasant. Yeah, it's a problem. Exactly. Yeah. And. And oh yeah, and uh, when it comes to you know um lockdown work, Ozzy, it was definitely a really big pain, weren't it? Um, it takes me getting everybody, including me, just cheated on our assignments. Yeah, and that's also one bad thing about it because when you do assignment assignments and you're supposed to be in like you know exam conditions, how are you supposed to be in exam condition when you're at home? Exactly, there are no exam conditions. Exactly, yeah. Like, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, really. And um, plus as well, sometimes. The online classes may not be very effective when it comes to attendance because, right, when I was, you know, working at a school on, like, an, an apprenticeship, guys, right, 
when we came back to school after, after the first national lockdown, where um, for me in 2020, um, there was one pupil who I heard did not attend any of the online classes in the lockdown, and, and he spent some, um, the entire lockdown playing on his PS4. I know about people like that as well. Yeah, he missed all his classes, guys. He didn't do any of the homework. He just played on his PS4 drop during the, during the entire lockdown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I haven't had that during the when I was online on back in 2020 and 2021. Mm. I haven't had that problem. That's good. But then again, there were a few classes that I did skip, specifically my chemistry class. Mm. Also, also because of my teacher. Oh, no. Yeah. I, mm. I don't want to go into detail about it. Hmm. Was, was, was your teacher unlikable, Ozzy? Oh, yeah, she was. Like, you had no idea. Oh, I don't want to have any idea because she sounds not very nice, does she? Yeah, but no, like, she didn't even care. That's just not good. When, you, when you're a teacher, you're supposed to care about your pupils and how they do. Because you, you, it's your responsibility. Yeah, she failed me on more than ten assignments that I've done. That more I've than ten? That is, just, that's unacceptable. Yeah. yeah, I've asked for help, but I've never got any response at all, and I just kept failing. That is just, you know, irresponsible right there. Uh, if I was a teacher, I'd help immediately without question. Yeah, no wonder why they fired her. Oh, she got fired. Thank God for that. Oh, good. Good. We don't want any teacher like that in, in school ever. They can't do that. It's not right. Yeah, except in this case from this week, um, we didn't do online classes. They just posted homework for us to do online, and I did it. Oh, nice one. Well done. I was able to watch some movies with some of the, some of the time I had, like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, and didn't you do, like, an MCU marathon as well? Uh, yeah, that was last year. Yeah, so in this in the time you've been having, you've been doing, having lots of fun to, to you know, in, to chill out, haven't you? That's good. Yeah, I've just been chilling in my room most of the time. Yeah, because when, when you do hard work, you do deserve a break afterwards, of course. Yep. Yeah. And, um, like a Harry Potter. Oh, that's cool. Is that the Years 1 of 4 and 5 7 collection on, on the next generation, is it? Yep. Oh, nice. Is there any difference to the Xbox 360 or PS3 version? Updated graphics. No, oh, nice. Yeah, because I might get it if I see it in the store one day, you know, to re- re- relive my childhood. I, I recommend it, in all my opinion. Yeah, because I played both the games when I was a kid, and you know they were amazing to play both of them. Yeah, really, two games and all in one. Yeah, really amazing games. And I actually got into the Harry Potter franchise, guys, by watching the films just because this game was coming out. So yeah. I got into Harry Potter because that was a long time ago when I did. Yeah, like. I watched the films, guys, just so I could play this game, really, really. And it was definitely really fun, because it was definitely really fun to watch the films. And I also watched both Death Hallows parts in, in the theatres, too. Both parts of it. I, I only saw part two in theatres. Yeah. Unfortunately for me, I only saw the Fantastic Beast films. Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw the first two. Yeah, I, of course, refused to watch the third one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah I mean, the two reasons being because I hated Crowns of Grindelwald, so that pretty much killed my interest in continuing. And two, but Johnny Depp. I stand with Johnny Depp. For me, no Johnny, no Watchy. Yeah, exactly. And the second movie killed my interest anyway because I hated the second movie. And of course, they're just hard to make the movie work as well. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard that apparently the third movie's not very, had good reviews either. So yeah, thank God I avoided it. Wait, it was woke. Yeah, it was woke. Apparently so. Yeah, I've not heard. Good, I've not not heard good things about it. Then again, whenever something comes out these days, it is going going to be woke usually. Anyway, you know, due due to you know due to Holly Weird, of course. How about Holly Wokewood? Hmm. Holly Woke Wokewood. Yeah, Holly Woke. But of, course, but of course, there are some exceptions though. With um, like Top Gun Maverick, it was awesome. One of those, um, one of those long awaited sequels, which was amazing, of course. But yeah, 
the vast majority of, of Hollywood these days is woke. Yep. Yeah. And there's many franchises that I stopped watching as well. Lots of them. Hmm. One of them for me is Harry Potter. No, not, not Harry Potter. I meant Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars, Star Wars and the MCU. Hmm. In terms of shows, I also start watching Doctor Who as well. Yeah, I started start watching Doctor Who a long time ago. Mm. Like, I think, I think, I think the last time I saw it was like, like 2020. Mm. I think I was like seven, seven episodes in to Jodie Whittaker, Whittaker season. Mm. But yeah, I just lost interest. Yeah. Trust me, you're saving yourself a lot of pain, you know, um, from, um, you know, if you oh, yeah. avoid. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Blaze, I look like a Transformer on that first picture there, but you're putting digital art. Yeah, Megatron. Hmm, looks familiar, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's also been other good films out this year too, which haven't been walked. You know, like um, Sonic Hedgehog 2, of course. Oh, yes. Yeah, Gina's film as well, Time of Prairie. Yeah, but that one isn't Hollywood, though. So, it's still a good film, Shadow. Yes, yeah, yes, of course. Yeah. Best film of the year. For me, yeah. Yeah, for me too. Uh, the, ba the Batman was great too, the oh, Batman. Yes, yes. Batman. Apart from apart from Catwoman being unlikable at some point, because of what she said. Yeah, and of course there were some block elements. Hmm. It was what Colin said, call it calling you know um Commissioner Gordon and uh, you know you know calling some people white privilege assholes. Yeah. I hated that line so much. Yeah, it was not needed to be included at all. I I, I fairly correct as as Lego Catwoman with a Lego Batman movie. Yeah, so but, but my favorite wall of all wall is, is one of my Max Fury Road anyway. I, I actually saw a figure of her today, that woman. In, in a store called Forbidden Planet, yeah. I'm selling a figure of her, that woman. I didn't get it though. Because I don't, I don't really think I want a figure of her, that's what she said. And, of course, they got movies like uh, Jurassic World Dominion. Yeah, a film, in my opinion, doesn't deserve the hate either. I consider it to be the most underrated movie of the year. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was, you know, enjoyable. Yeah. Like, I don't understand why people don't like it, to be honest. Some people say it's probably the worst of a franchise. But we, all, but we all know which one is the true worst. Yeah, we do. I'm just like, try watching Jurassic Park 3, and then we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah, I hate 3. Hmm. And Dominion served us a good ending to the franchise, too. So. Hmm. Absolutely. And for once, they didn't waste legacy characters. Yeah, exactly. I think that's one of the few times that legacy characters weren't were wasted. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I like about Dominion because it brought back some great characters from the original movie and they didn't ruin them like was with, with, with Disney World sequel trash or did to hand Luke and Leia. Oh, I just noticed something, Luke. What Blaze, what's up? Look in the look in the online list on the ghost on the server. What do you mean online list? Checkers online. Let's have a look. Oh, Peter! Oh, 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 oh! Yeah, our our guest will be online. Is online. That's cool. Yeah, I just messaged him. I just messaged him to know when he's actually joining. Well, that depends on how busy he is, you know. I mean, he, he's online right now, so that means something. Hmm. Yeah. So you can. And video games go woke too. Well, how about Last of Us Part 2? Yeah, and what about this new um, Saints Row game? Yeah, I've not, I'm not the game, game, guys. I saw clips of it. I'm thinking, what the hell is this game? 
what, what game? Saints yeah, Row. The, the, Saints, the Saints Row remake. So. It's, yeah, it's a reboot, guys, and it looks absolutely awful. It, you know, it doesn't really doesn't feel like a Saints Row game. The graphics are awful, and the physics are pretty bad, too. Yeah, and, uh, and of course, they, they hate you if you, uh, if you don't like it. Well, I hate them anyway, so yeah, screw them. I'll gladly just play the first four games and that's it in the series. I'm more going to play the first four games and not this new one. Hell no. And besides, I've got better games to play, which i got as well to play too. Better games to play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because right now, guys, I'm, I'm of course playing Assassin's Creed 3 and I'm really enjoying that game. It's really fun. And uh, yes, yesterday I finished uh, Uncharted 2. Cool. Hmm. I, I, thought, I thought it was bad in the first game. That's cool. And uh, I think on Wednesday I'll start with 3. Hmm. Man, uh... Oh, one second, am I... My microphone... Yeah, I'd have to look forward to Black Adam. Hopefully it'll be really good and worth the long wait for it, too. Hey, it's this month. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll be going... I'll, be, I'll probably... I think I'll be seeing it in theatres, too. Blaze, I'm not going to Connie. I'm still playing a tape um, in Assassin's Creed 3. And yeah, and uh, the game doesn't, doesn't deserve the negativity that it got because it, it was a good game so far. Mm. Yeah. Getting hate for story or gameplay? I don't. I honestly don't know what it's game of hate for because I think it's good in both of those categories. The gameplay is really fun and the story looks pretty intriguing so far. And. Yeah, so I don't understand the negativity really, and when it comes to, you know, uh, new videos in the future, guys, I'm thinking of one of doing, like, you know, uh, collection videos where, where I show my Blu-rays for certain franchises. I might probably start with Star Wars first, and also, you know, um, then maybe on to MCU, DCEU, whatever. And, um, plus... I think Ozzy, you would be. I think that I have no doubt you'd be you'd be happy about this. I was. I, I might also probably do a video showing off my Blu-rays for Steven Spielberg movies. That would be very interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, do you own a lot of Spielberg films yourself? I don't think so. I got I got to round up my Steven Spielberg movies at some point. Mm. I know I have E.T. and Jurassic Park for a fact, along with Jaws and Indiana Jones. Yeah. Do you own them in, in um, normal quality DVDs or just Blu-rays or whatever? Uh, some are Blu-rays, some are DVD quality. Hmm. Very nice. Hmm. Oh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton? Yeah. Yeah, I could do one for him too. He's also one of her directors. And how about Christopher Nolan? I think I only own the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah, I could do Christopher Nolan. I mean, do you own lots of Tim Burton films yourself, Ozzy? Uh, I think so too. I mean, you obviously buy on Batman Returns, don't you? Yep. Oh, Susie so wants to say hello to us, guys. You know, Susie, my other cat. Lily's in bed right now, but Susie might want to join us. Susie, come here. Oh, yeah, that then. She meowed at me. Susie, Susie, come here. I don't know what you want to do, guys. Come here. Oh, oh, Susie. Oh God. Here she is, Susie. Isn't she adorable, guys? Good old Susie. Oh, Susie. 
She's very meowy, isn't she? Very vocal. Right, Suze. She's adorable, isn't she? Yeah. Very talkative, isn't she, as well? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of meows, yeah. What a mess. Yeah, she's adorable, isn't she, when she meows? Her voice is just so cute. <laughs> okay, don't sir. Go then, bunny. All right, she's going. See you, Susie. Yeah, so I could do, you know, Tim Burton and Christopher Nolan, because I do own quite a lot of their films, Ozzy. Oh, yeah. I'd have to get caught quite on Blu-ray, though. Because these collections will, will be like Blu-ray collections, basically. Hmm. I think there might, there might be some directors who I own DVDs for who I probably won't do because um, they may be from directors who I recently lost respect for, for example, like um, Darren Aronofsky, for example. What did he do? I mean, what movies did he do? Well, he made he made a movie which had very bad reviews called Mother Ozzy, and uh, he reacted very badly to it, getting an F on Ron Tomatoes, disrespectful way. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, Ozzy, and, um, do, don't, don't see Mother. Yeah, don't see Mother. That movie is awful. Apparently, it's traumatizing, and um, yeah, and he responded negatively when people criticized it, so he lost he lost my respect for that. Oh. Hmm. Um, yeah, the, movie is, the movie is traumatizing. Yeah, mother is traumatizing, but it's uh, just terrible. I mean, Ozzy, oh. right? Shall, shall I shall I give you, you know, like um, three words as to why you shouldn't watch it? Why? Okay. Okay. okay brace yourself, Ozzy. Brace yourself. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. one. A baby dies. Oh, uh, give me a second. Oh, God. Where's he, where's he going? Okay, I'm back. What did you do, Ozzy? I just said WTF, but with the actual words. Yeah, understandably so, yeah. Like, I don't know what uh, he was thinking, including that in a movie. Like, that's just horrible right there, going out of line. And that is the main reason why I despise that film. Yeah. And apparently, Ozzy, it was also so traumatizing that, you know, movie lover, he walked out at that scene. He walked out of the cinema at that scene. Well, I don't blame I him. I guess mm -hmm. I blame him. What yeah. movie are we talking about? I, I had to go away for a bit. What movie is being discussed? Mother. It's, it's called about, Mother. Um, what called Mother. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're talking about why I lost respect for Darren Aronofsky, the director, because he was disrespectful to people who gave negative reviews. So that's why, guys, you know, the only films I've seen by him are, you know, Requiem for a Dream and Black Swan. I'm, I'm going to keep it that way, to be honest. So I guess he's the fourth director I lost respect for. Yeah. I mean, there's three directors, including him, that come to mind who I hate, you know, like, uh, for example, I hate Ruin Johnson, and I also hate um, Kevin Smith as well. And um, who else is there that's done a bad job making films, guys? Um, and there have been, you know, nasty people in real life. Um, Joss Whedon, Whedon, yeah. Brian Singer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Brian Singer also did very bad things as well, so I lost a bet for him. Oh, well, I do like, of course, his X-Men films, but, you know, um, still... Uh, and Superman Returns. But, you know, still reasonable lost respect for him, so you screw him. And as many actors I, of course, also hate as well. For example, most hate to one, of course, being Army Hammer. I despise him. And, of course, uh, Amber Heard. Worst actress, yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, Alec Baldwin. Yeah, I hate Alec Baldwin, too. And also, um, TJ Miller. Also, Kevin Spacey. Yeah, Kevin Spacey too, yeah. Hate him. Who else? Who else?
Hmm. How about oh, the people? Oh, how, 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 about, how about you know the cast of you know Rings of Power guys who are saying oh, that it's, it's, yeah. good, it's good? It's good to disrespect. It's good to disrespect Tolkien's yeah. work. Yeah, um, yeah. For one, one, yeah, one actress that comes to mind is Morphe Clark. Yeah, I heard that apparently she's really. I heard that apparently she's really Galadriel. bad as Gladriel. She's really bad as Gladriel. Well, we can just call her Guy Gladriel. Yeah, because she's not mm-hmm. Gladriel. She's not Gladriel. Oh, well, here's another one I can add. Add on from Diary Whoopi Kid, um, Ryan Grantham. I have no idea if I said his name right. Ryan Grantham. Yep, I also I lost respect for that kid. The kid? Who, wait, who did he play in that movie, Ozzy? He put, in Whoopi Kid, he played the character Rodney James, which I think was the the kid that got that, that, that got um trampled over with when during the Wizard of Oz scene. Yeah. You remember when the tree fell on him? Yeah, and uh, what did he do that made you lose respect for him? It's best if I just say it in the no mic chat instead of saying it out loud. Yeah, dude, just type it in there, yeah, and I'll respond to it in my own way. And then, of course, we also have Chris Evans. Oh, yeah, hey, Chris Evans. Oh, thank you. As a person, thank yeah. You. Okay, just look in the no mic chat. Right. Oh, my God. Okay, I definitely hate oh. him then now. Yep. I think I can... Yeah, there's no way I'd, I'd ever like that person ever. No way. Sounds like a right nasty piece of work. I guess you could call him Rune Grantham now. Rune Grantham, yeah, Grantham. good one. Or Burgen Grantham. Yeah. When it comes to, you know, when Spielberg's work, um, Ozzy, is there ever been that time when, you know, you've, you've forgotten a film was by Spielberg? Yeah, I actually forgot Tintin was from Spielberg until a few years ago. I can see why. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think he did that at all until I saw recently when I watched the movie for the first time. Let me see if there's anything else. I think Ready Player One was one of them. Hmm. Yeah. That's one of his few works where John Williams did not do a music for him, isn't it? Yeah, okay, we got yeah. 18 minutes. We got we got 18 minutes um, until our guest joins. 18 minutes, players. That's cool. But you can, yes. you can join when he wants to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, looks like on the top of my head, only those two. Yeah. Sometimes I forget the War of Worlds is by Spielberg from 2005. You know that one, Ozzy? Yeah, War of the Worlds. I know that. Yeah, I mean, did you... Have you sometimes forgotten that it's by Spielberg? No, I still remember. Yeah. And would, would, you say oh, that, would you say that the music in that movie is frightening? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, what music would you say is the scariest in that movie out of the whole soundtrack? The main theme. What, when, when the tripod's first attacking? Yep. Yeah. It just proves that John Williams can, can be a master at making such great music, you know, light-hearted and scary-hearted. It's amazing. Well, I got another movie that I forgot was by um, Spielberg, what? The Lost World. Yeah, um, that's the only sequel to Jurassic Park that he's, he's directed, yeah. Other than that, I mostly remember everything else. Yeah. I mean, are you aware that he directed a film that's always called Bridge of Spies, Ozzy? Not until now. Yeah, that's, that's another one of the collaboration with Tom Hanks as well. Yep, I'm on his filmography right now. Yeah. Cinematography. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yesterday I rewatched the two towers. I saw. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, and I, oh man, I can't wait for next week. Hmm. So you got a math phone figured figure out, figured out, have your shadow all figured out. Yep. Hmm. Under, under, where's the mund? Is? Where's the mund? Oh. Because I was going to start a DVD haul actually and whatever. You know, but the way Oh, um, he told me he's going to join in the after party. Okay, that's, that's fine, Blaze. So, scaling's off then, guys. So, by Amazon, I was able to get um, a horror film this week. And, and this is, of course, um, the first ad- adaptation of Hannibal Lecter of all time, which, of course, is uh, Manhunter. So, I got this and um, stars Brian Cox as um, Hannibal Lecter. It's pretty decent. And then, guys, I also was able to get a trilogy as well, guys, on Blu-ray. 
And in my opinion, this franchise only works best as a trilogy, and that's of course none other than no 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 Pirates of the Caribbean. Yep, on Blu-ray, guys. So yeah, got those as a Blu-ray, and yeah, I also. Yeah, the oh, yeah, no. What are you saying? Yeah, the, first movie, the first movie is decent. But it, yeah, it was not even needed. Yeah, like, was, was it? Was needed. Was, was needed, no. Yeah. I also picked up as well um, to some some Xbox One games, guys, and um, I thought I'd try this franchise because I heard many good things about it. And that's of course um, I got the Halo Master Chief Collection and also um, Halo Ooh. Five. Master Chief Collection, yes. yeah. Yeah. Oh, Halo! I haven't played Halo in a while. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard good things about this franchise, guys, so I might play it. And um, I've also heard that apparently um, Master Chief is Jay's favorite video game character of all time. Yeah, he's voiced by Steve Downs as well. Yeah, great voice actor. I also as well picked up two games by Tom by Tom Clancy, guys. Last week I picked up the Division games, whereas today I picked up the Ghost Recon games. Nice. I've heard that, yes. I've heard apparently Ghost Recon Wildlands is very well received and is, is amazing, so Blood Cross playing that. I used to have that game. Yeah. Also, guys, I picked up as well, well or something which of course came... Which, which came before a very awful reboot in 2016, guys. And this is a game which I wish is the true sequel to the first two films of this franchise. And that's, of course, um, the remastered version of... No, 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 Remastered as well for Xbox One, guys. Wait, that game plays like Dead Space, which is the coolest part. That's cool. That's cool, Blaze. Really cool. I love that game. Yeah. I love that game. And also, guys, so... I also as well, you know, went to my store yesterday to get some uh, more Blu-rays. Um, so it's it's a shame that you know Mulu hasn't joined yet because I was I was able to get you know um, Die Hard two on Blu-ray. Nice. Yeah, in my opinion, a pretty under underrated sequel, Die Hard two. Yeah. I also as well got um, what is my favourite movie of all time by um, David Fincher, guys, which is um, Fight Club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great movie. Has, so far, it's my favourite role of Ed, Ed Norton so far, guys. I also appeared to a comedy movie by Seth MacFarlane, guys, which was um, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Oh, yeah, that's funny. That's yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's really funny. So yeah. Really funny but movie. Especially what Charles Ferron does to uh, Liam Neeson. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> and I also picked up as well um, the latest installments of a Vin Diesel franchise, guys. And this, this latest installment is, of course, um, Riddick from 2013. Yeah, Riddick. Because, yeah, Riddick, in my opinion, is a, is a character they should have done more films of and less Fast and Furious films of a Vin Diesel. They should, they should have done less Fast and Furious and more Riddick, in my opinion. Because Riddick's a badass, he really is. One of the worlds of Vin Diesel of all time, guys. And I also saw Pitt up what is also over my, my new second favourite role of all time from Ryan Reynolds, guys, in this film. And that's, of course, Buried. So, yeah, oh. I'd, I'd recommend this, guys, if you want to see Ryan Reynolds in a very serious role. Because, yeah, this is definitely very serious, of course. Ooh. Yeah, I'll be here watching it when I come. Yeah, his performance in the movie is absolutely amazing. It really is. And then, in addition as well, I also as well got, um, in my opinion, the most underrated movie of all time by Sean Levi, and that's um, Real Steel. Yes. Yeah, in my opinion, a very underrated film, guys. Sean Levi's most underrated work. Yeah, it's also my favorite world of Mackey of all time as well. Yeah, Connor Blaze is here in the chat, yeah. Oh, Connor. Yeah. Hmm. I also as well upgraded... Um, um, my two favourite movies by Ill Illumination, guys. And that's, of course, um, Despicable Me 1 and 2, upgraded. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm, I mean, these are the only ones going to own a franchise, guys. A lot, I'll always get Rise of Gru when it comes out as well, but I'm not buying Disc with my free or Minions. How about uh, Rise of Gru? Yeah, I told you, I'm gonna, I said I'm going to get it. I guess we've all got ways also from my favourite wall of Jessica Chastain, guys, in a, in a movie. <laughs> Which of course is um Zero Dark Thirty. Never heard of the movie. Yeah, great movie. Also as well, um, 
one of my favourite comedies of all time, and um, it's also as well um, one of those last ones to be co-directed by an actor I do I, I now hate. And that's, of course, um, This Is The End on Blu-ray Upgraded. Oh, yeah, that movie's funny. Yeah, and as you can see, uh, Seth Rogen, the actor I hate, is being punched by Craig Robinson, guys, in the picture. Oh, that's satisfying to play. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Very satisfying. Because it's what he deserves. Oh, Connor's asking... Yeah, Luke, uh, Connor's asking who's the special guest. Yeah, I see you told him. <laughs> it's a voice actor, yeah. Yep. He's going to join in 20 minutes now, I think. Excellent. Yeah, 10 minutes. Uh, Excellent. Uh, and yes, so I also, I also picked up as well um, two Disney classics, guys. One of them, of course, was the animated version of Beauty and the Beast. Yep, the only movie that, the only Beauty and the Beast movie that exists. And the one I also got was um, The Little Mermaid. And and also guys, I also flat out refused to watch that gender you know that you know that race swap remake as well. Not watching that trash. Yeah, yeah because Ariel the Little Mermaid is not black, guys. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. The character is not black. Yeah, they did that to Albert Wesker as well. Yeah, in that Resident Evil Netflix garbage, didn't we, Blaze? Yep. And Ozzy, you know how I said earlier that I was talking about Bridge of Spies by Spielberg? Is that another movie you got this week? It's one of my, one of those films I got today. A bit in, on this, you know, hall. Yeah, there you go. Bridge of Spies. Very good movie. Yeah, I might check it out one day. Yeah, I also got picked up um, Scream from this year, guys. The one from this year. Ah. And in my opinion, this this is where the franchise should stop. To be honest, they should stop here. To, in my opinion. Well now, well now I know where to stop. Yeah, I'm not, I'm yes, not going, yeah. to, I'm not going to be watching, you know, um, this one coming because the main character, you know, Sydney Prescott's not, not even going to be in this new one. So, I'm not going to be watching. And I also thought I would also get something to do with Star Wars, guys. And this is, if this is a film that came out after Avengers: Sith, just so you know, guys, in the franchise. So yeah, this is post prequel trilogy, guys. Just so you know. Can you guess what it is? Uh, well, well um, it's something that came to render safe, and all, and all I can say is, but it's um, dun 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 30 scenes of a show. Nice. So this means I can binge watch it um, on a rewatch. That'll be, that'll be fun to do. Fantastic. Yeah. Is it? And the last thing that I got that I got from my store yesterday was actually a steel book, guys, of one of my favourite slasher films of all time, guys, which in my opinion should only rest as one movie alone. Had a really awful sequel starring Mila Kunis. And this movie, which in my opinion was only one film, is of course American Psycho. <sighs> Oh, yes. Yeah. And, yeah, let's get out, out of, you know, the cardboard packet here. Hold on a second. Oh, it's like, you know, stuck in. There you go. So on the front, it shows, you know, Christian Bell's character, Patrick Bateman. And, yeah, looks pretty cool, doesn't it? And on the back, yeah, there he's again on the artwork, yeah. It's pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. Yep. And, yeah, that's what I got yesterday, guys. So, what's up, Blaze? Oh. So um, and then on to what I got today. So I went to the Kets, you know, store in Manchester, and I got some more things. So to further add to what I got for Scream, I was able to get a triple pack of the first three films of the franchise. And hopefully one day, guys, I'll find Scream Four. Hopefully, boy, yeah. Here's a here's a, here's a triple pack of the three films. Oh, ah, Patrick's here. Greetings, Patrick. Good evening. Yeah, up here. Doing okay. well. I also as well picked up a, up a show, guys, which came out this year. A superhero show, actually. And this is, this is one of the very few superhero shows I watched this year, guys, which I thought was really good. And that's, of course, none other than, of course, um, DC's Peacemaker. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, great. Oh, great show, in my opinion, guys. I quite the series, too, and... The only thing about it is Ezra Miller's at the end, end of it in a cameo appearance, sadly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but 
but thankfully, this one more uh, Aquaman roasts him. Yeah, that was very satisfying. I just was all oh, pissed over Disney Classic Guy, which in my opinion is an underrated Disney movie, and that's not other than Bolt. Oh, nice. Yeah, in my, in my opinion, this is an underrated Disney movie, Bolt. And it's also the one for the world full of John Travolta as well. That's him. Yeah. And I was a little pizza. One of my favourite, like, you know, um, one of my favourite films with Leo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy of all time. There's also my favourite wall of all time with Domino Gleeson, guys. And that's, of course, um, The Revenant. Oh, man. Love that movie. Yeah, I love this film. And what's also great, guys, is it, it won Leonardo Cap- DiCaprio the Oscar. Very well deserved for this role, in my opinion. Very well deserved. Very well deserved. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> I also as well paid up as well. Um, a film which came out last year, guys, in a franchise involving fighting, and is of course none other than 2021's Dun 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 Yeah, more to come out from last year, yeah. And I've then picked up I've then as well I'll pay up, you know, um two four K films, guys, you know, four K and Blu-ray. One of them is for um what is one of my favorite war films of all time, guys. One of my favorite films of all time by Mel Gibson. And that's, of course, um, Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah, I love Hacksaw Ridge. And um, and you know how I said earlier, guys, about a lot with the Dan Aronofsky? Well, um, there's only two films I'm going to have by him. And I, and I got the one I'm, on, I have, which is, of course, um, Requiem for a Dream. So, yeah, great movie, in my opinion. So, yeah. Hmm. And then I also as well went to another store called um, HMV, guys. You know, uh, Hear My Voice, it's called, and uh, got some more things. So, so for starters, I was able to get as well um, the 2003 remake of um, Sex of Chainsaw Massacre, 2003. It's a re- really good remake, in my opinion. Then also an- another film as well, starring John Travolta, guys, along with Nicolas Cage, which is Face Off. Yeah, very good movie, in my opinion, Face Off. And also... Either way, uh, Movie Lover is in the Nomad chat. Well, is he going to join us or what? Uh, I don't know. Well, hold on. Let's hope, it, let's hope it does. No, that's not Movie Lover. That's McLovin67. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I confused it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, hold on. He's going to want to see the information I was talking about. Yeah, he's talking about, you know, um, why we lost respect for a certain actor, yeah. Yeah, I explained it to him. Yeah. And also as well, um, I, I was picked up a sequel film, guys, which involves, you know, magicians. And that's, of course, um, Now You See Me too. I mean, so also has my favorite world of Mark Ruffalo as well, guys. Now, this franchise has my favorite world of Mark Ruffalo. And you know how I said I, I, I was going to, I, I, I've got two Spielberg films today, guys. One of them being Bridge of Spies. The other one was an upgrade, which of, which of course was War of the Worlds on Blu-ray. Nice. Yep, go on Blu-ray. Very underrated movie, in my opinion. I also saw Peter as well. Another film in 2005, which of course is um, Sin City. Yeah, this is a great movie. In my opinion, film didn't need a sequel as well, in my opinion. And I really need to watch that movie. Please do, it's really good. Got a great cast of actors in it. Really big, you know, like ensemble cast. It's amazing. Definitely worth checking out. Absolutely. But I also thought it was a horror film from from um from the eighties, guys. And this is the start of a great franchise involving a doll possessed by a serial killer. And that's of course Ooh, the, that's of course the original Child's Play. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Then also as well, I thought that was awkward. Um, another sci-fi horror film, or action film from nineteen eighty four, which of course is. Dun 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 dun. The Terminator. Oh, Terminator. <laughs> First one, yeah. Then also, well, a Pixar film, guys, which of course is um actually their first ever prequel, guys, which is Monsters University. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of those underrated Pixar films, actually, guys. I I, I enjoyed Monsters University. And I think it's overhated, in my opinion. Overhated? Well, um, I don't see why it got hated because I enjoyed it. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. I liked it too. It was it was nice to see to see how Sully and Mike met. It was really good. We did that, and 
Next up, guys, I also played some, some um, Disney classics as well on today's, uh, as well in today's visit to HMV. One of them is for one of our all-time favourites, which is, of course, um, Mulan. Mm. Yes. yes, the original yeah, remake. One, guys. Don't worry, guys, not a remake. I refuse to buy a remake. Oh, yeah. are you saving yourself from a lot of pain? That remake is the worst. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, I'm not, wa- I'm not watching. I'm not watching because Disney said they support concentration camps in it anyway. So yeah, screw that movie all the way. Because yeah, guys, in okay, case you don't know, um, the credits of that movie literally confirm that Disney support concentration camps. So yeah, screw Disney. What the hell? Yeah, that's why I hate Disney, guys. Okay, we've got ten minutes. Uh, nice. Nine minutes now. Then I got as well another classic, guys, which of course is um Hercules. Yes. Yeah, great yeah. movie. Has a lot of other people like, you know, Rip Torn, Danny DeVito, James Woods. It's a great movie, Hercules. Mm-hmm. Also, as well, another one which I think is underrated, which of course is um The Hunchback of Notre Dame on Blu ray. Oh, that one was really dark. Yeah. And then, you know how I said I got the, 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 the recent Mortal Kombat phone guy as well? I was able to get my favorite one from 995. On Blu-ray. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then also as well, I was able to get the recent director video movies from 2020 and 2021. So here's a Blu-ray of Battle of the Realms from 2021, guys. Great movie, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And then also um, a steelbook of Scorpion's Revenge on Blu-ray. Wait, let's see this. Yeah, there you go, Blaze. Look, it's just literally the poster of Scorpion, yeah. It looks so badass, doesn't it? Amazing, yeah. Incredible. <laughs> Right, let me just pop these back, guys. Eventually, what figures I got? Say, I got, I got some figures too. Are you also gonna get snow blind? When it comes out to me, Blaze. Yeah, I didn't see it today, sadly. It's really good, in my opinion, as well. Nice, nice. <laughs> That's good. By the way, what's up, Patrick? Um, remember how I said I had gotten my hands on a bunch of episodes of Star Wars: The Clone Wars, but that there were some that had issues? Yeah, Patrick. Well, I managed to get some help from my sister's boyfriend. Yeah. And I managed to find uh, good versions of those episodes, with one exception. Mm. There were some issues with the episodes he had gotten from season three in that they didn't have any audio, Mm. which means that the first episode of season three is one I still have issues with because the original issue was that one had good HD quality, but the audio was muffled. And mm. the version of that episode that my sister's boyfriend got uh, had no audio at all. So that I one see. still has issues. But now I have good versions of all the other episodes I previously had issues with. Mm. Well, I'm glad so if you... you ever need clips from Star Wars The Clone Wars, I've got you covered. Thank just you, not with the first episode of season three so far. That's okay. No worries. And then also, guys, so I got some figures. One of them is a naked figure of... Ripley from the Alien franchise. Mm. Yeah, wearing a space suit. And also as well, um, a figure of um the Ed 209 from Robocop. Mm. Yeah, you know, the big robot guys that has machine guns on it where it says, you know, put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also got two Star Wars figures, guys, in, in Black Series. One of them was, of course, um, I'll show you, um, um, Fennec Shand. Oh, yes, nice. Fennec. And the other one I got was, of course, um, probably my favorite Disney Star Wars villain of all time, which of course is, um, which is Moff Gideon. Nice. Yeah, comes oh. with a dark saber too, guys, which is pretty cool. So I was very happy about that. By the way, I, uh, very quick thing. Oh. Oh guys, um, um, oh, yeah, pa- uh, yeah Patrick, uh, Patrick, look who's joined us. Oh yeah, I remember hearing about this a little while ago. He's un, he's muted though at the moment. Yeah. Oh. But the thing I want well, to mention it wasn't exactly one o'clock Pacific time yet. So. Oh, alright. So um, <laughs> yeah. So um, am I am I speaking to Peter Jessup right now? You are. All right. Well, um, nice to meet you, sir. Um, my name is okay. uh, my name is Luke, and I'm a, and I really love your work as a voice actor. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So everyone here. So 
Um, would you guys like to introduce yourself to Peter, the voice actor? Hi, Peter. My name's Blaze. Yeah. You might know me on Twitter for inviting you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Shadow, hi, how about you? Shadow, how about you? Yeah. Yeah, hi, Peter. My name is Shadow. Hello, Shadow. Hmm. Hi. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, I, do, of course, I do, of course, have a real name, but I don't want to reveal it. Yeah, it's Sorry. private, isn't it? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, and um, so would you like to call would would you, would you like us to call you Peter or, or Mr. Jessup? Oh, Peter's fine. Peter's fine. Okay, brilliant. And um, Alexander, what, how are you introduce yourself to Peter? Uh, hello, my name is Alexander Malinin. I am a YouTube content creator. I enjoy making different original and fan made videos and projects and comic dub, uh, and lots of that kind of stuff. And I also have heard some of your performances and am quite a big fan of them. Mm. Uh, and I, yes, and I enjoy them quite a fair bit. Mm. So, yes. That's cool. And uh, Patrick, how about you? Evening. My name is Patrick Simon Jonsson. I'm from Denmark, and I've been doing YouTube for roughly six years. <laughs> And I've done a lot of comic dubs where I work, where I have worked with um, internet voice actors and professional voice actors on a few occasions where I've gotten lucky enough. Um, and I'm a big fan of your work. I especially really was impressed with your performance as uh, Brainiac in Justice League Heroes. I thought you sounded a lot like Corey Burton's Brainiac. Oh, thank you. I'm curious though, was that intentional? Were you trying to sound like Corey Burton when you no, were playing Brainiac? No, that's thing. They they just happen to be very similar. So yeah, because I thought it sounds all because I thought it sounded almost identical to Corey Burton's Brainiac from uh, Superman the Animated Series and the Justice League cartoon. Mm. Yeah, that was the the vibe. Um, obviously, my my voice is lower than his, but uh, yeah, that was that was the that was the idea was to have him be. Very much a, a AI sort of sounding character. Mm. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so, um, Ozzy, how about you? Introduce yourself. Uh, hi, Peter. Um, as you can tell, my name is Ozzy. I do YouTube too of, I guess, whatever I like to do on the channel. And my favorite work you've done is in Lego DC Super Villains when you voice Steppenwolf and Two Face. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I play that game. That's my favorite Lego game. And um, when you voiced Two Face, Peter, um, were you asked to, to do an impression of another actor, or did you also do your own thing for Two Face? No, that was my own thing. They actually, um, when I got to the session, um, they told me I was doing three different characters for that for the Lego. Uh, That's cool. Super villains, yeah. So I did Two Face. I did. Uh, Steppenwolf, and I did uh, Monsieur Mala. Oh, yeah, Monsieur Mala, yeah. Isn't he, isn't he that, you know, French gorilla? Yes, hmm. <laughs> the French gorilla. Yeah, that, so. yeah, you had a very good French accent for a while. That was pretty good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, really good. Uh, a question. Uh, this is about, uh, 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 once again, uh, the Two-Face. That's uh, Do I understand correctly that that's a Batman project you were in? It was in a yes, game no. called Lego DC Supervillains Alexander, yeah. Not just Batman, but like, yeah. you know, DC in general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, well, that's that's very interesting. I, yeah. I, no, I been, think that's very interesting. Yeah, I've been me. Steppenwolf twice. I was also Steppenwolf on uh, uh, Justice League Action. That's really cool, yeah, that you got to play the character twice, yeah. And yeah. you did very well at the role. Really good at Steppenwolf. <laughs> well, thank you. I agree. And I have a question for you, uh, Peter. If yeah. or do you want to ask something first, uh, Luke? Um, you go ahead, Alexander. You ask him your question. Yes, um, Peter. So I was going to ask. Um, um, you know, you're voicing. Um, for instance, obviously, I, I assume you voiced a lot of original characters uh, in some projects. But if we're talking about like Harvey Dent, uh, Two Face, or Steppenwolf, which you're referring to right now, yeah. um. 
how, how does it kind of feel to you know play characters which are so popular in that they have already been t interpreted in all of these different ways and you are joining that part by providing your own version into this universe where you know you already have a lot of these other contenders and so on and adding that into a pre-existing character that's already been portrayed uh, well what, what when, I did, when i did steppenwolf um the only on-screen portrayal of steppenwolf that i had ever seen had been in the old justice league mm. um they hadn't done the movie yet yeah the live action uh justice league films yeah so i was pretty much given you know carte blanche to do whatever i wanted uh, um yeah yeah and and how did it feel to be you know a part of like other voice actors who play the character like you know um Sherman Howard, Corey Burton, just to name a few. How did it feel to be among those as a voice for a character, Peter? For Steppenwolf or for yeah. Uh, yeah. Maniac? Yeah, so, Step so, so let's say Steppenwolf then. How did it feel to be among many voice actors who play the character? Well, at the time I was actually a little grumpy because I had been Superman. Oh, really? And this was a, That's new, cool. a new project, and I wasn't Superman in it. And I'm sitting in the lobby talking to this kid, mm. and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm Superman in this. I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> Guess I'm not oh, Superman wow. anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um. So, when it comes to what I've heard you in, Peter, um, I played a game when I was a kid, which is based on on the movie called Transformers: Avenger Fall, and you, of course, voiced Soundwave in that game, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I did. I, I gotta say that your voice in that game yeah, was, was that game was definitely really amazing. That voice really was definitely really amazing. The Soundwave, it really was. And well, and that was. That was yeah. based on nothing because honestly, I I got the job and had not been paying attention to Transformers in mm. recent years and had no reference for Soundwave, so I literally just made up what I was doing. Mm. So th thank you for your <laughs> approval on that one because I, yeah. I will I admit if I was doing it right. Yeah, go on, Patrick. I will admit there the casting for that game always like confused me because like a Devastator. Um, Soundwave um, and Grindor were characters in both the game and the movie, and those characters were voiced by Frank Welker in mm -hmm. the movie, but he didn't voice Megatron, which was voiced by Hugo Weaving, and then in the game they had Frank Welker voice Megatron, but they didn't have him voice the characters he actually voiced in the movie. They were played by other actors. That like right. really confused me when I first noticed the casting. Yeah, the casting is very different, yeah, to a movie, yeah, yeah very interesting. I think part of that is that uh, with the movie, they got Frank to come in and do it, uh, mm. the other characters, because he wasn't doing Megatron. Mm. And when they came out with the game, they wanted Frank to be Megatron. And, uh, you know, why would he want to play five characters? Mm. So that's why they split up the rest of them and let us do them, so. Mm. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Yeah, and I'm kind of curious. I also have another question. Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. So this might just be my inner opportunist and my inner casting director speaking here, but I really do have to ask because I'm curious. Are you like one of those voice actors who would be open or okay to doing uh, voice work in like indie projects, like YouTube animations and stuff like that? It depends on the project. Uh... I get a lot of requests to do uh, voices as characters that I have played for like fan projects. And I always have to decline because those characters are owned by the companies that made the projects that I worked on. Mm. And so, I mean, I can do, I can come up with characters, I can do new characters, that kind of thing. But if someone asks me to do a, a an Albert Wesker, say, uh for a fan project i'm not albert wesker anymore mm. they they replaced me with someone else and they replaced him with someone else now they've replaced the third guy with someone else so it's really not uh, i don't feel that it's uh it's disrespectful to, to to the company for me to to do a character that i no longer play does that make sense yeah that's understandable i'm curious though does that apply to other like for example i have been planning on maybe doing like a five nights at freddy's 
animation for a little while, you know, like a little fan animation. Like hypothetically, if I were to hire you to be like the guy on the phone, for example, for that, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Final Fantasy Freddy's or not, but if I were to hire you for that, would that be possible? Because like Final Fantasy Freddy's is technically, you know, like owned, though I'm pretty sure you haven't been a part of that yet. That's still a not. lie. And, and for projects like that, uh, and again, depending on the project, I've I've had friends who have done projects and said, hey, can I hire you to do this for me on the side? And I will say no, uh, but I will do it for free. And there, that's that way it's not a conflict. I'm not getting paid to play that character. I'm just doing a favor for a friend. But if I were to hire you for that, that would be possible? Or am I uh, misunderstanding this? <laughs> uh, we can talk later. You've got you've got my my link now, so you can you can message me. Yeah, actually, right. I'm kind of curious. Could I quickly show you guys a little test image I've done? Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Yeah. So um, yeah. yeah. So um, it's why... in the uh, no mic chat. That's cool, Patrick. So when it comes to um Albert I'm West, when it comes to Albert West, Patrick, um, I, who you just mentioned, Peter, I gotta say, but um, that's definitely one of my favorite roles you've done as well. You were pretty intimidating in a role, in my opinion. As a character, you really were. Well, and again, you know, the the idea when we did the initial remake, and that was 20 years ago. Wow. Time uh, flies, wow. isn't it? I know, right? Yeah. Um, they wanted to start from scratch. They didn't want it to sound anything like the old uh, overhead shot Resident Evil. They were doing a whole new... Uh, cinematic video game. It was the first cinematic video game. Yeah. And so they hired us because we were regular actors. Mm. And uh, so that was, you know, we, we got to sort of create the characters. They didn't tell me I was the bad guy until I turned into the bad guy. Oh, wow. I thought I was just the team leader. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's pretty so, cool. Yeah. Curious. Was it yeah. intentional for you to sound like kind of like a James Bond villain? Uh, that was DC Douglas. Hmm. Oh, so, so, uh, I, so I, I played it completely straight the whole time. Oh wow! Yeah, DC, yeah, DC, yeah, DC so Douglas. Like, DC Look was definitely yeah. really amazing as, as Wesker. Yeah. Oh, there's a question. Oh, Peter, there's a, there's a question in the comments on this on here asking you how did you you become a voice actor. Oh, it's a long story. You guys really want to hear it? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, we, it's uh, look, can I just quickly add, computer. Uh, it's rare that we have new people on here, actually, uh, or you know, uh, mm. especially uh, guest appearances and stuff like that. So whenever somebody uh, comes on, someone new, we're very interested. We're players. We would be very invested in your story. All right. Well, here, here, All right. Here's the story. So I. Uh, I got a job on a sitcom back in 1991. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. I'd just gotten married. We moved out to Los Angeles. Very nice. And uh, so I was going to do the show, and I was on a bicycle, and I got hit by a car. Oh, dear. Oh, oh no. And I landed oh. on my face. Oh, well. And skinned off the whole right side of my face, couldn't do the show. Oh, oh no. And I thought, oh, well, man, I'm sorry to hear that. What mm. am I? I'm very sorry to hear that happen to you. It was 31 years ago. I'm over it. Uh, but, yeah. uh, you know, um, yeah, you look pretty good time, nowadays. I had to wait for my face to heal. And I thought, well, I'll do voiceover because uh, I had done that in Chicago. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'll just lean into that. And it turned out to be the coolest job in the world. And I, you know, started making a living doing voiceover and I never really looked back. Hmm. That's. Wow, so it, it was definitely, you know, a pretty big surprise out, out of, you know, a pretty tragic tragic situation, wasn't it, 31 years ago, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It actually so, kind of reminds me of something. Yeah, Patrick, what is it? It's actually kind of similar to the story I heard about Mary Elizabeth Mac... Yeah, how you say the rest of her name? McGlynn? I don't remember how it's McGlynn, pronounced. is it? Yeah. If I remember correctly, I think it was... She had a similar reason for getting into voice acting. I think, like, she had to do a stunt for a show once, mm. but she had to fall off a horse or something, and she got badly hurt. Oh, dear. It led to her, like, getting into voice acting as well. Huh. Mm. I never heard that, so I'll have to ask her next... Well, she lives in Hawaii now, so... Oh, wow. Well. Hi, Peter. Uh, 
I'm I have, to I have a, new, a few questions for Peter, actually. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Go ahead, Ozan. Sure. Yeah. Okay, well, um... Okay, well, well, let me think. Actually, give me one more minute, please. Uh, okay. I'm thinking in which order to ask them. All right, so yeah, you think, Alexander, right. and uh, while we're waiting for you to ask, um, there's a question from another commenter, Peter, asking, um, you know you know how you did the voice for Vision in Earth's Mightiest Heroes by Avengers Show, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Um, the commenter's asking you, um, did you recall the lines separately, or did you get a chance to meet the other cast members when you were working on the voice? Oh, no, we recorded that as a whole cast. It was great. Oh, that's cool. So you got to work with yeah. people like um, Eric Loomis, Brian Bloom. Yep. In fact, I just saw Brian Bloom uh, about a month ago. Oh, we wow. That's worked, cool. We hadn't worked together in quite a while, yeah. and we got caught up. But, yeah, no, it was great. It was, uh, And that's where I met Mary Elizabeth, actually. She was oh, that's playing. Cool. Uh, oh, wow. That's um, amazing. Yeah. One of the... One of the uh, sword officers mm. but yeah no we sat in a we sat in a big ring basically and the engineer would go around the room as we did our lines and turn our mic up turn our mic down and uh it was great in fact there's an episode emperor stark where mm. uh purple man takes over the world yeah kilgrave is it yeah kilgrave yeah and i and uh the vision comes out of his auto repair mm. And like, wait, where is everybody? Hmm. And so uh, the Vision downloads Jarvis into his operating system because this is before Vision was British. Hmm. Uh, and Jarvis was British. So Phil Lamar, who did the voice of Jarvis, and I had to read the same line in exactly the same pacing. Hmm. So he when he when it was his line and he read it, then I had to repeat it exactly as he had done it, and vice versa, so that both of our voices could play at the same time. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like definitely a challenge there to save a line at the right timing and the pacing. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, may I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Blaze. You ask. Uh, Peter, what was your opinion on the mission, the line of betrayal in Fallout Four? Uh. Which one is that? Uh, it's the one where the Brotherhood of Steel turns on Paladin Dance. Oh, I, well, you know, uh, having played through, because I, I can't remember the mission names themselves, but I know what you're talking about. It's, uh, I always was sort of resigned to it because Paladin Dance is, after all, a synth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's where he goes through the whole soul searching and do i hate myself what am i doing blah 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 um yeah i mean you know brotherhood's supposed to turn on on him at that point mm. so yeah i don't blame him brotherhood yeah I'm, I'm ready to ask all right yeah, yeah are you ready, are you ready? yeah go for it yes um okay well firstly i guess the first thing that i do want to ask you mr uh, peter is um are there any particular performances that you have done throughout your undoubtedly long career that you enjoy and uh, specifically or maybe have a, a strong place in your heart, but that maybe aren't really listed online? Because I know many per many performances or many projects tend to be forgotten about online. Like I know some audio dramas usually aren't like written in filmography or stuff like that. Is there like a, a performance you enjoy? of yourself that's uh that you did but that's not really well recognized or too popular or widely spread on the that's web a, that's a know? good one um because honestly probably my favorites are still going to be uh the two we just talked about the vision and palette and dance um because they were both really well put together and very well written and a lot of fun to do but ones that aren't necessarily um there was a game Shoot. I can see the logo. I can't remember the title of the game now. Um, mm. If I had my phone, I'd go I'd go on my IMDB and look it up. Um, but it was like a hunt a hunter versus the it's like a five man team and then the other side is the one person playing the monster and you'd hunt. Oh, uh Evolve, isn't it? Evolve, thank you. Yeah. Um 
and I, I played a, a sassy AI mm-hmm. and a robot. That was a lot of fun. Um, I'm currently I, looking at your page from behind the voice actors.com. I think yeah. that character seems to be called Bucket. Bucket, yes. Bucket the robot, who's also the ship AI. So that was that was fun. I play a lot of robots. <laughs> Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, uh, can I mention something quickly? Sure. I just noticed you were actually in two of my favorite animated shows. You were in Avatar The Last Airbender. Yes. And you played a curator in an episode of The Batman. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Batman, pretty cool. the Batman was a funny one. I uh, So back in those days, Andrea Romano was the voice director and voice caster for anything that involved Warner Brothers. Yeah. Uh, but she also did Avatar, The Last Airbender. Mm. And I was one of those guys that she would call up. I don't know, maybe four times a year I'd get a call and say, Andrea wants you to show up. She's doing this, whatever the project was. And I would go in and she'd give me a little character to play. Um, but the Batman was a lot of fun because... Uh, I then later worked with Dietrich Bader, who was Batman in the Batman. Oh, nice. No, he, no, he was Batman in Batman and Brave and the Bold. Yes, he Sorry. was Dietrich Bader, yeah. Oh, yeah. We played Shadow Thief in that particular episode, and that's when we actually met and, you know. Oh, that's cool. Uh, for work together. But then I was Superman, and he was Batman in JLA Adventures. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. That was a fun experience uh, because it was... I think there were only four of us in the in the room at the time. Oh wow! When we recorded that. Room. Yeah, because that, uh, that movie had a lot of voice actors in it, right? so yeah, only four, including you and Diedrich, was there. Yeah, it was me and Diedrich, and I think Robert Clotworthy and um, uh, Rena Romano. Oh yeah, and that that was it for that episode. Hmm, that's cool. Um, yeah. So. Um, Ozzy, have you got a question for Peter? Because I don't you've asked him what yeah, what one have you? No, oh, I haven't asked yet. Yeah, do you want to ask? Have you got a question for Peter? Sure, I might as well ask a few. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Lay it on me. Go for it. Okay, I don't know if you feel comfortable answering this question, but has there been any times in the voice acting career like you've had trouble getting along with someone? Because it's common to happen in acting life. Huh. Um not really voiceover is a very uh the voiceover community particularly here in la is is very inclusive uh everybody's just happy to be there everybody's happy to be working and you know even when you're auditioning against people that uh are the same voice type as you are um you you uh you know, it's not a particular, you know, that I got cast because that was better. I'd say I got cast because that's what they were thinking of at the time. Hmm. You know, so you're, you're going into audition for whatever it is. And it's me and say Steve Bloom in the lobby. And we both sound the same. Uh, and whoever gets it, gets it. And that's great. Hmm. So really, I don't think I've ever had a beef with anybody. Uh, that's, that's great to hear, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. And. When it comes, if I was to say what my favorite wall is you've done, Peter, I, I'd probably say Vision. I think you're my favorite portrayal of Vision, actually, in Marvel. Yeah, that, I love gosh. that. It was it was so well written. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that show was amazing, wasn't it? I mean, did you watch the show, Peter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was and amazing. I had, I had watched it before I got cast as Vision uh, and had auditioned for a couple of other parts. And I remember getting the call from my agent said, telling me that I'd gotten a part of Vision. And I was like, oh, this is great. He's like, no, nice. no, you're a series regular. And I was like, oh, they're wow. really, really bringing in the Vision. And then, of course, they canceled the show. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a shame that the show got canceled. I mean, I'm, I'm very dis- I was very disappointed when they canceled it because it was it was an amazing show. And um, yeah, when yeah it, I agree. When it comes to Ozzy's question about, about voice actors, Peter, has there been a particular voice actor you've really enjoyed working with in your whole career as a voice actor? Oh, there are so many. Um, James Mathis from uh, and, like Rick Wasserman and Chris Cox, all the guys from the Avengers were fantastic. Yeah, they are great voice um, actors, yeah, and they seem like really nice people, absolutely. Yeah, um, 
Cree Summer is a, is just amazing and wonderful. Yeah, she's um, very talented. Gray Delisle uh, has literally blown my mind every time I've worked with her. Yeah, she's also amazing. She has, uh, done, she's had, she's done something that I've just like, went, wow, how did how did she do that? Kind yeah. of, every, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and. Yeah. When it comes to um, your recent project, Peter, um, uh, when it comes to your career as a voice actor, um, have you been, you know, um, working remotely during, you know, like these tough times of, of the last couple of years? Yeah, yeah, we all have. It's been kind of a drag. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, were you, how how were you with that? Like, would you say was it like okay for you to be working remotely? It was. It was fine. You know, work slowed way down uh, for a certain period of time. Yeah. Um, and I I much prefer working in person with people. I yeah, like, me I prefer too. to go into the studio. Um, you know, but you do you know you do what you got to do. Of course, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, working with other people in person when voice acting, it kind of reminds me. I think the first time I ever found out that some were doing that was for Star Wars. Was the Clone yeah. Wars? Yeah, I found out in a featurette that they recorded all the lines in the same room together, even though they weren't looking at one another. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's really yeah. good how we do it because it, it makes the conversations it, it, by the characters more authentic, doesn't it? Really more realistic if they're together in the scene. Oh yeah, it's very well, good. You can actually okay. react to the line as opposed to pretending to react to the line. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, yeah. When it comes to your recent project, Peter, um, I heard some, somewhere that apparently, were you an, an additional voice actor in that recent Resident Evil TV show on Netflix? <laughs> yes, I was. Oh, yeah, um, I, I noticed in the... Yeah, because um, Blaze here um, told me that he, he he heard you in one of the episodes as an announcer in the science lab, lab yeah. Yeah, well, it's actually, I'm the announcer when they're giving the safety warning. Oh yeah, uh, and I'm and I'm British in that. Um, oh wow! And but they had yeah, it was the 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 guy who does the additional dialogue recording uh, is a friend of mine. Oh, that's cool. And he knew that I had done the original Resident Evil, and I think he called up whoever was in charge and said, "Hey, wouldn't it be fun?" To... So uh, I was also uh, Courtney Taylor uh, was also one of the. Uh, uh, ADR people on this as well. Oh, that's cool. So Ada Wong I to... and I. Yeah, yeah. And um, did you watch the show, Peter? I I watched some of it. Yeah, because um, I heard uh, that apparently that show had really negative reviews for some reason. Yeah, I've not seen the show myself, so I can't comment on it. But I heard it didn't have, didn't have very good reviews. Sadly, it, it it's not it, the reason people didn't like it is that Resident Evil fans were going to were tuning in to watch. Resident Evil, the video game on a on this on a, as a show, and that's not what they ended up doing. Yeah, yeah, I heard the it, show it was very different. Yeah. The show is fine. It, it's uh, sort of in the Resident Evil universe, mm. but it's it's they should have called it something else. But they chose yeah. Resident Evil because that sells it better. I guess I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I think it would have made sense if they gave it, you know, a much more suitable title. So yeah, to make sense what what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, oh, hey so, Peter, um, I've got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead, Blake. Yes. So, with the direction that Resident Evil is going now, would you consider reprising your role as Albert Wesker in like Resident Evil Nine? Probably. Uh, you know, I've always been open to going back and and doing uh, doing another Resident Evil. the The reasons that I was not involved in anything after the initial reboot were all really pretty much uh corporate and monetary um this they when they the right after we did the, the reboot in 2002 uh they recorded the next one in canada and that's when they got richard waugh um and then the following games they wanted to do non-union um and dc douglas is uh what they call financial core of the union so he can do non-union jobs and I remember when he auditioned for it, he called me up and he said, hey, they just sent me this voice match and it's this guy and it's you. Uh, is it okay if I, and I'm like, yeah, go for it. 
so he went for it and he did several games and you know really has sort of become the albert wesker hmm. you know so good for him <laughs> yeah um so uh, yeah you know uh, if they uh, wanted me to come back and do it i'd do it sure nice uh, I, was, uh, I have a question yeah go ahead oh, and also my other questions still remain from before right. so after shadow could I... yeah you, you yep. go on after, after, after shadow alexander yeah so go ahead shadow okay i was thinking um so peter is there um is there ever been a time where uh, 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 okay sorry what would you say is your least favorite voice performance I don't know. Uh, they're all. I enjoy what I do, so I've really mm. never had. Uh, maybe for some commercial voiceovers that I've done, um, and only because the producer or the director was being a dick. Oh, that's oh, the only, yeah. that would be the only reason. And you know, but even then, I'm getting paid, so you know, you shut up and you do your job. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So, so, Alexander, um, have you got a question for Peter then? I have my two questions from before, yes. Go ahead, I, yeah, ask him. Right. Uh, so firstly, you mentioned, obviously, you mentioned uh, Mary Lynn, I believe, and knowing her personally and stuff like that, but are there any other actors that you're, or voice actors that you also kind of communicate with or friends you got to know maybe on, on the project or somewhere like that maybe uh, you want to let us know about? Uh, it's, it's a small community. I mean, you know... Um... I know I've, I've been at this a long time, so I know most of the voice actors. Um, the ones that I, I hang out with and do things with, um, uh, Carolina Ravasa and I had lunch right. uh, oh, a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, I, I think I mentioned Courtney Taylor uh, is a good friend. Um, yeah, yeah. Matt Merker. Oh, Matthew um, Mercer, yeah. I think he's a very yeah, talented and, voice actor, yeah. Oh, yeah, terrific. Leon. Leon. <laughs> yeah, great voice yeah. actor, yeah. Um, yeah, there, there are, you know, it's a small community. Yeah. So we all, yeah. yes. we all know each other. Yes. Well, well that's, that's very interesting to hear, certainly, you know. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 you know, it's always fun to see that, you know, even the professional voice actors, you know, in the big entertainment industry kind of, you know, go along and kind of meet each other and stuff like that. So it's, 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 it's quite a funny thing, I would say. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, and... Looks like we've got another other guest here, which is, of course, uh, Mule of 120, also known as Don. So, yeah, Don, in case you wonder, we, we've got a special guest here, which is Peter Jessup, the voice actor. Nice. Yeah. So if you want to ask him any, any questions, Don, you can go for it. Yeah, why not? Alexander's got a question from Alexander. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, and also because I was looking at your Behind the Voice Actors page with all of your voices and some games and stuff like that listed additional voices. And I was wondering uh, if additional voices, what does that more specifically, does that refer to you like in a crowd, in a background voices and stuff like that? And if that, if that is the case, then would you be able to spot yourself or recognize yourself as an additional voice in a project or something like that? Honestly, uh, yeah, usually I just did um, the new expansion for Fallout 76. Uh, oh, nice. I did a, I'm a bunch of the fanatics and I'm the fanatic um, warden, I believe, in one of the strikes that you do in the pit. Oh, yeah, I need to play 76. Um, but yeah, no, people have actually, it's funny because I had, I, I did, um, just some extra voices for, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, I think. Oh yeah. It, One of the Red Dead. It, it lists that and, game. Yeah. Yeah. That game is yeah, absolutely the, phenomenal. Somebody found it and, and, and made a little clip of me talking about, you know, getting out, get off my lawn kind of a thing. Hmm. Oh wow! So someone, uh, someone, and I, someone found your line, but that's cool. Yeah, they recognized my voice, and they're like, "Hey, it's Paladin Dance telling me to get off his lawn." <laughs> and I thought it was hilarious because I had forgotten I'd done it. Uh, but you know, they, they, you audition for things, or you get it. They, your agent calls and says, "Hey, I've got a session for you." They don't tell you what the game is because there's always a code name. So uh, a lot of times, I don't know what the game is that I'm doing. Uh, 
Fallout 4, for instance, when I showed up, I did not know what it was going to be. And one of the first lines that they put up on the screen was, there's a group of ferals over there. And I was like, oh, this is Fallout. Hmm. <laughs> and the nice. director was like, oh, you know Fallout? And I'm like, yeah, I play Fallout. So nice. that was fun. Yeah. But sometimes, but most of the time, you have no idea what the game is. Hmm. That's cool. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, Patrick. Since you did Fallout 76, I have to ask because I'm curious. Did you hear of how like terrible the initial launch was for that game? For Fallout 76? I've been playing it since it launched, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, it was, you know, it's it's a hard thing to do to try and adapt uh, a very detail-oriented uh, RPG to be a multiplayer like that. So, yeah. you know, more props to them for doing what they can. And they're constantly going in and trying to fix things. Uh, it's good, too, because, like, I remember, like, there was this video someone made of every glitch that they found in the game. And that video was five hours long. Wow. Like, Goodness me. I, now, when you say that, though, I also remember uh, people had posted videos of glitches in uh skyrim oh yeah skyrim and you yeah. walk into the room and the dead body of the viking you've just killed is flopping all over the place and knocking stuff down <laughs> oh yeah so, you, know, so though. <laughs> you know so there's there are gonna be bugs and then they get fixed so hmm. yeah uh, can also be funny of course yeah yes well it that, be hilarious. that particular bug was hilarious yeah so. and when it comes to Skyrim itself, Peter, I see that you in that game as a character called Mirak. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because I played that game a long time ago. Yeah, that was definitely one of those one of those best games for its time, absolutely. The 2011 game. Oh no, I loved it. Uh, yeah. Mirak actually came in later. That's for the Dragonborn DLC, and I'm the I'm the the boss, the final That's boss. Cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, who left with the Aussie? Yeah, oh, I think it was Aussie, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so Don, so Don, because you you came in, have you have you got any questions you'd like to ask Peter Jessup? I don't have any right now. That's all right, no worries. So when it comes to there's, there's some questions in the comments here, Peter. One is asking you, what do you think is the difference between voicing characters on on a TV show and a video game? Well, the big difference is that the the TV show is is a, a full script. Oh wow! And they they write out the whole script, and you get to read oh, through it, to, so you know what the story is going to be. Uh, video games, it's literally just uh, you in a booth by yourself with the director, uh, and they put a line on the screen, and the director says, "Okay, here you are inside a hospital, and you're talking to a guy," mm. and then you read your line because they give you they give you a little bit of background, but there's there's no. Uh, you don't know what's happening really in the story as much when you do video games because there are so many options. They can't give you every option to read through beforehand. Mm. So there's a lot more uh, sort of, you know, seat of your pants work in video games. Uh, you just have to figure it out and make it up as you go along. Mm. Where it, whereas when you're doing a television show, like say the Avengers or Avatar or something, you've got the whole script. And you know what's happening in the story, and you can plan your character that way. Nice. Yeah. Can um, I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. It's just that the whole conversation about glitches before actually kind of reminded me of this really funny thing. So, like, there's these Try Not to Laugh challenge videos online, of course, on YouTube. And I remember one of the clips in one of those that I saw once was from Fallout 4. And Pallet Dance, I think that's how you say the name. Yeah, Pallet Dance. Dance yeah. Remember, remember the clip, the funny clip? It was one of the scenes where a character, I think it's the player character, is having a dramatic conversation with Pallet. But the thing is, it's not a pre rendered cutscene, it's in game. The thing that happens is apparently one of the enemies was inside the room during the cutscene. So all the while, while the characters are having this dramatic conversation, the main character is being slapped by this enemy the whole time. And because the voice acting is pre-recorded, they don't react to it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> 
the characters just being slapped the whole time while they're calmly talking to one another and not acknowledging it. Hmm. That's funny. Yeah. And I did get a glitch in Fallout 4 where Paladin Dance got stuck in a hospital once. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. And when it comes to your career as well, Peter, um, has there ever been a character that you really enjoyed voicing, but you wish you could do more of that character? Yeah, probably the vision. Yeah, because um, did you only voice it in that show at Earth Mightiest Heroes? Yeah, it was World's Mightiest, Hero Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and it was we, we recorded a total, total of nine episodes, but they when they cancelled the show, they sort of chopped up the last three episodes into the final episode, like the series finale kind of a show. Yeah. So I really only I only did six episodes even though I recorded nine. Oh wow. Yeah. And they cut out a whole bunch of good stuff that the vision did in those episodes and it was that was a little disappointing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, a, it's a shame of a show ended, yeah. Very disappointing. But again, that's, I'll also never be able to voice that character again because the canon has changed. Yeah. And so. When it comes to people you've worked with, Peter, um, when it comes, have you ever worked with like um, celebrities in your career? Yeah, a couple. That's cool. And um, oh. now, when it comes to voice actors, have you ever worked with, with a voice actor, you know, Mark Hamill? I have worked with Mark Hamill. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, yeah. Did you actually get to work with him in the studio? Well, yes and no. Uh, the first time I worked with Mark was on a. Uh, we did Spawn, it was called Spawn the Animation, and it was a f feature length animated uh, Spawn. You, do you guys know Spawn? Yeah, Spawn, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, okay. I love that. Um, yeah, I keep it. It's, it's never going to come out. Oh, no. And it's a shame because it was oh. great. Oh, no. um, Clancy Brown, Cree Summer, Miss Kitty, um, Phil Lamar, Mark Hamill. Uh, just an amazing cast, and it was a great script. Mm. They had some sort of disagreement with the studio, and they and they killed the project. Oh no! Oh. And I never got to talk to him. Oh. And I thought, well, I'll talk to him at the next session, and then there never was a next session. Mm. So uh, that was a big drag. And then later, I did uh, Dante's Inferno. Oh yeah, I'll play that game. Which was an animated film based on the game. Oh, nice. Wait, yeah. Somebody, wait, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, he's in that, 2010, yeah. And an animated epic it is called, yeah. Yeah. And so I, uh, that's when I actually met Mark. And uh, the story goes something like this I'm sitting in the lobby talking to the production manager, Everett. And Mark comes in. He's like, Everett, how are you? He's like, oh, hi, Mark. This is Peter. And Mark said, oh, Peter Jessup. And I went, <gasps> mm, oh, Luke wow. Skywalker, my name. <laughs> I, I know that feeling. Yeah, in that's amazing. Head. That, yeah, that. And kind of and, reminds uh, me of how they reacted, uh, Howard reacted to Mark Hamill in uh, Big Bang, Bang Theory. Theory. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen that show, Peter, Big Bang Theory? Uh, you know, I, I haven't really watched it. No, my my wife likes it. Oh yeah, um, it's it's definitely a really funny show. And Mark Hamill, of course, had a guest appearance in one of, one of their most recent seasons. Yeah, and James Earl Jones as well. Yeah. Yeah, you, you may know James or Jones, yeah, Peter Jessup. Sure. Yeah, you may know Peter Jeff. You, you do, do you know James or Jones, Peter? I've never met James Earl Jones. No. Yeah, and are you are are you aware that he's a course with the voice of Darth Vader in Star Wars? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He appeared as himself in the show alongside Carrie Fisher. May she rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah, um, it's really cool that your wife likes the show. It's definitely really funny. I'm I'm actually up, up to it the third season. I'm actually it's definitely really funny, really fun to watch. And when it comes to um, your other roles, um, have you ever played a role, Peter, where um, you've actually done a role in um, motion capture or you just pure voice acting for your roles? Uh, I pretty much just do voice acting. Um, oh, nice. In the early days, when we did Resident Evil, they did facial capture. Oh, nice. Um, but, yeah, I kind of missed the whole boat on on motion capture. Um, mm. My friend No Shared. Dalal does a lot of it. He's he's one of the nice big low cap guys. Um, so I that's I think that's a generational thing. You know, I'm not a young guy anymore, so 
Mm. Hey, yeah, I don't, didn't I don't move story well with a lot of these guys. <laughs> yeah. But also, if I may ask one more question, uh, this is interesting. I think, because um, I would assume, obviously, with you know all of these projects and everything, but uh, obviously you record first, and then I assume they animate based on what you recorded. But has there ever been a time or experience in your career where you voiced over something that was already pre-animated and you had to actually get into the lips, or has that never happened? I assume not. Um. I've done live action dubbing. Oh, nice. Um, oh, yeah, in the Sculpting Kid movie. But I've never really done any animation dubbing. There's a whole uh, subsection of voiceover that the, the guys that do all the anime, because uh, those are all done in Japan, and then they send them over here, and they get these guys to come in and do them. Um, I've got friends who got their start doing those, you know, Yuri Lowenthal and, and Kari Walgren nice. uh, and Stephanie Shea all started out doing uh, the anime dubbing. Mm. Uh, Roger Craig Smith started out doing anime dubbing. Nice. Oh, yeah, Sonic and, the Hedgehog. <laughs> you know, it's a, it, it's a great way to learn your craft. Um, but I think, uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever done any... No, it's mostly been live action. I've done a couple of shows for Netflix where I've I've dubbed in uh, the a couple of character voices or the main. I did one show called Signs uh, or Znaki. It's a Polish police drama slash science fiction fighting ancient Nazi UFOs mm. show. Uh, very, it's just completely off the rails. It was fantastic. All right. Um, so look that up. And then I've got a new one that's coming out on the 7th of October called Man on Pause, mm. which is a Turk. It's a Turkish show about a middle-aged guy trying to, you know, find joy in life and, and screwing it up. Oh, I'll be on the look up <laughs> about it. Yeah. I'll, I'll be sure to see if we can find it. Yeah. Oh, so the English dub. Of yeah. That, I'm doing yeah. That one. Oh, there's, so. a que there's a question here asking, um, is there a franchise that you, you would wish to be involved in, Peter? Like a franchise that you say if you're like a fan of, but you would love to be a voice actor for? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, very good question. That well, is a good question. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'll I'll work on anything, honestly. I uh I like I like the work. I enjoy doing what I do. Um but I think if there was, yeah, what would be a good project that would be fun to work on that's not over? You know, they've canceled so many shows recently. Yeah. Yeah, sadly, um, yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. You know, I think... Uh, oh. that's, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very understand, un understandably tough, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Because um, oh yeah, um, you see the thing is the thing about me, Peter, is that I li I'd like to be a voice actor one day, really. And I I, did, the, uh, I tend to do like you know like voice impressions in my spare time, mainly of Transformers and um yeah. I'd oh yeah, I'd oh yeah Peter, I did send you the Transformers uh, voice demo, didn't I? Oh, I think, I don't know how to find it. I apologize. It's on, it's on Twitter somewhere. Yeah. Oh, on Twitter. Okay, good. I'll find it then. Yeah. I'm, I'm on my laptop right now, so. Oh, nice, yeah. Uh, because, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to do voice acting in my spare time, Peter. And if I was to be in a franchise, you know, I'd love to do voice acting maybe for Star Wars, because I'm a Star Wars fan. Yeah, those would be fun. I, it's it's interesting. I've never gotten to do a Star Wars show, and they've done like 20 of them now. Yeah, there's lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they keep making new ones, too. And they keep making new ones, and yet I'm I'm, for some reason, not in the mix on any of those. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, D. Baker took over all the Bad Batch, so there really wasn't room for anybody else. Uh, yeah, because he's everybody. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's all the phones, yeah. You know that. Okay, can I quickly interrupt? He becomes a one-man army. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Oz. I know what you're saying. I just wanted to quickly intervene while we were on the topic. Have you ever Have you ever met D. Bradley Baker? Oh yeah, yeah. That's I've cool. known I've known D. for probably twenty years. Wow, that's amazing! Twenty yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you did watch. Uh, you did watch the 
the boys film all. <laughs> oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a, there's a question for you here, Peter, um, from someone called Daniel Skinner in the comments. Daniel's asking you, um, have you ever been to the Cartoon Network headquarters in California, in Burbank? I, I have. I recorded the second episode of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender right there. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Yeah. So you went to that, to that studio. That's pretty cool, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, Cartoon Wait, Network is... question for you. Yeah, go on, Blaze. So what's... Uh, what is it, is, um, what's the game that you like but everyone despises? For example, um, Bioshock 2. I really like that game, but everyone despises it for some odd reason. Hmm. Uh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, hmm. I'm an RPG guy, basically. So, you know, I started out. Uh, uh, what do I like that people don't like? I don't know. I liked. Uh, I liked Crimson Skies. That was fun, and that didn't seem to do well. Hmm. Way back, way back in the old original Xbox days. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you've you got oh. a question, Don. Yeah. Yeah, go for it, Don. I bet you haven't. Video games, like, 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 it's probably a film you like, like, everybody hated. Yeah. yeah. So, have you got a film, Peter, that you, you like, but a lot of people will hate? I could not understand what he said. Um, He's asking, um, is there a film that you like to watch, but a lot, but lots of people hate? Oh, a film. Yeah. Hmm. That's another good one. Um. I don't know. I'm again. I'm an easy audience. I I don't really. I've never really hated anything I've ever watched. So. Mm. Um. I was trying to remember what the what was it that I was just watching the other day, and someone was talking about it, and they said, "What's you know why all the hate on?" Um... Hmm. Was it a Marvel movie? I don't remember. Honestly, I, I can't think of one. Sorry, mm, that's all right. Can I ask a question. Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Uh, did you finish that Mark Hamill story, or was that it? Oh, that was pretty much the end of it. Yeah, is that you know when, when I met Mark and he knew who I was, it, you know, like uh, freaked me out. I do have yeah. a follow up story for that though. Oh yeah, because oh. everybody in Los Angeles has that story, and mm. so I don't know. About two years later, uh, I was at LA Studios, which is a recording studio here. And Mark was sitting in the lobby telling his version of that story to everybody in the lobby. And it was that he was on a plane uh, with George Harrison. Oh, the, and he was, the Beatles. So you heard, you've all heard the George Harrison story, right? Yeah, isn't he one of the singers of the Beatles, Peter? Right. So he was one of the Beatles. And Mark Hamill was just so excited, he said, so I wrote a note. And I gave it to the stewardess and said, can you bring this to Mr. Harrison? And it said, I just wanted to say thank you for, you know, all the joy and beauty you've brought into the world. And the, the flight attendant came back and said, well, would you like to go meet him? He's invited you to come over and meet him. And so Mark Hamill got up and got over and went, oh, I'm going to meet George Harrison. <laughs> so I heard, I heard that my story being told by the guy who is the guy in my story. If that makes sense. So everybody's got the story of when they met somebody and they were like, oh, my God. So I got the, uh, my oh, my God guy telling his oh, my God story. Oh, but there's no um, sad in between. Because uh, when you said it, it was like a thought that you meant that he didn't get to interact with him in the end. You were, no, he did. He was over and he said hello. And he said, you know, thank you so much. And George Harrison said, yes, oh, yes. And, uh, I, I'm glad about that. Yes. Yes. Big, because so, I thought that it was like your first interaction with Mark Hamill, which never actually no. really happened. But that's what you're referring to. Yeah. No. So I had I had my moment like that with Mark Hamill, and Mark Hamill had his moment like that with George Harrison. So that was that was my follow up to that story. Hmm. I have another question, by the way. Yeah, Patrick. Go for it. 
actually thought your little uh, Mark Hamill impression there when you were telling the first story was actually pretty decent. Yeah, I was thinking about too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could, could, wait, uh, could, could you do it again? Because I think I missed it. I missed. Oh, yeah. I missed it. oh, oh, Peter Jessup. Yeah, that was my Mark Hamill impersonation. Oh, well, that sounded like Mark Hamill. That was actually pretty impressive, but yeah. Yeah, and um, so when it comes to, you know, uh, movies in general, Peter, have you got a favourite film of all time that you you what, you, you regard your favourite film? I've, I've never been able to peg this just one, no. Mm. Yeah, because he, um, he... Although recently I would have to say Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh, yeah, that's an amazing yes. movie. One, one of the best films of this year, Amazing. That, that to me was one of the most most perfectly put together films I've ever I've watched in a long time. Yeah, it was it was amazing, absolutely incredible. Well, hey, Peter. Hey, you know the game, the Callisto Protocol. I don't know that I do. It's, oh, it's, um, it's a new game coming out this year, Peter. Yeah, Callisto Protocol. Yeah. Uh, did you hear that Josh Duhamel is going to be playing the main character there? Yeah, Josh Duhamel. Yeah. I did not know that. No. Yeah, um, I know. Him, I know him for being in in the first three Transformers films uh, and the fifth Transformers movie. You know about Michael Bay. Yeah, he was in those. Yeah, that's what I know him from. Yeah, he does a lot of uh, American television too. I've seen him on a bunch of stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, when it comes to um, your roles, Peter. Um, yeah, it, it seems. But um, would you say is is Stephen Wolf one of those roles you've 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 only played more than once because it seems many of your roles have all been played once, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of one-offs. Um, yeah. Hmm. So I mean, well, part of it is that a lot of my characters end up dying. Um, like Paladin Dance is never going to be in another Fallout. So. Yeah. Um. You know. Um. Well, I, actually, uh, Destiny and Destiny 2, I'm the player character voice, uh, if you play as an EXO. Oh, nice. Um, so I'm in I'm in all of the expansions, and actually I'm the only player character voice in, in Destiny 2. <laughs> uh, cool. Male player character. Zara Fazalba is the female character now. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a question in the comments asking... So nowadays the law has of course changed, and there's been a pandemic that's happened. But um, what would you say to people who are in need of, of hope in the in these tough times, Peter? Uh, people who do. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. What What would you say to people who um who need some hope in these during these tough times that, that have happened? Like, what would you say to people who need hope? Who need hope? Gosh. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's. Uh... I could use a little hope myself, quite honestly. It's been a pretty a pretty bad couple of years. The whole yeah. pandemic has been brutal. Yeah. yeah, it was. But I think I think again, every day above ground is a good one. So yeah, as my grandmother used to say, uh, you know, I just just here's the secret to success. This is hope for somebody. Uh, when people say to you, you know, how did you succeed at whatever you're doing? I forgot to give up. Hmm. I forgot to quit. Yeah. Never, never give up. Yeah. Never give up. So. By the way, we have another person joining the chat. Yeah. Ah, so. so oh, yeah, Maria. So, Maria. Oh, okay. Hello, so, um, Maria. yeah. Hello, Maria. Hi, everybody. It's been Hello. a long time. Yeah, it's been a oh, while, yeah. Maria, we and, missed you so much. Yeah, and also, also Maria, Maria, also, no also, also Maria, we have, we have a very special guest here because um, the red icon here is the, the voice actor Peter Jessup. Yeah, um, actually, Peter's been, hi, so nice to meet you, well, to hear you. Blaze has been uh, keeping me up, mm. up to date with that. So glad you, yeah, you could make it I'm to the actually, Discord. Uh, I'm going to have to say goodbye in about a minute because I, oh, I promised okay. my sons that I would take them out to lunch. Oh, okay. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's all fine, Peter. Yeah. yeah well, um, I've got a question. Let's make some here. Uh, Maria, um, b before Peter has to leave, um, have you got a question for Peter? Um, well, actually, what he just said, 
um, was really, really inspiring. Um, yeah, it was. Very inspirational. And, yeah. and, uh, to forget to, you know. Um, Got to give up. Yeah. No, yeah. Forget yeah. to give up was, uh, it was like, yep, yeah, that's, that would be the solution because. Yeah, what what we're facing a lot of us uh, in the arts industry right now is like, um, well, there's whole canceling and uh, not finding a job unless you're following a certain, you know, way of thinking. Um, and it's like very discouraging because mm. you want to be you and you want to be faithful to you and respect others, but um, you find yourself in the situation, but you know. You have to forget to give up. So yeah, I think I don't. I don't have any questions. That was really, really inspiring. Very beautiful. Yeah, uh, pa uh, Patrick, did you say the question for pizza yourself, Patrick? Uh, yeah, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. I am I the only one here who thinks that if he's given like a good script and the right direction, Peter could actually be a pretty decent Batman. Yeah. Well, I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Peter, I think uh, Peter, I think you would be awesome with Batman. Yeah, I would love to be Batman. There's there is an intensity, and, and you know, I I got a chance to work with Kevin Conroy. Oh yeah, he's awesome, oh, Kevin yeah. Conroy. Let I, I did not think I was going to get to do because uh, he had announced he was retiring. Oh really? And uh, yeah, this is a couple of years ago, and we did Escape from Arkham. And oh, very cool. We had to be on the game. character that I played was the the Wetworks captain, and I had the big fight scene with Batman. I was like, "Oh, good! I'm going to get to do a big fight scene. I'm going to get to record with Kevin." And I got to the studio, and I got in the booth, and I'm like, well, "Where's Kevin?" They said, "Oh, he already did fight efforts. He's in New York right now." Oh. And I was like, "Oh, oh wow. man!" Yeah, but, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that's, that's disappointing, and isn't then, it? Really. Well, he came back and he did uh, Justice League action. And I got to work with him on that as Batman, and that was a bucket list thing for me. So that's incredible. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Congrats. and uh, uh, Peter, that's so awesome. Yeah, go on, Blaze. Uh, Peter, I sent you a photo of Josh Duhamel uh, as his character Jacob Lee in the Callisto Protocol. Oh, nice. Thanks. That's cool. He yeah, that's pretty cool, doesn't he? He's a cool guy. Yeah. 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 Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I think that's about it for the questions, isn't it, guys? Uh, so yeah, um, so Peter, um, have you? Is there anything else you'd like to say to us, Peter? Oh, me? Uh, yeah, it's been great meeting you all. Thanks for all the questions. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, uh, and um, well, if if you if you'd like yeah, to if you, if you'd like to, Peter, you. if you like to, Peter, around this same time now, um, I actually do these streams every Saturday and. Um, if you'd like to come on, you're very welcome to because, you know, you're part of, uh, you know, my server now, aren't you? So if you'd like to come and say hello again, you're very welcome to. Terrific. I may do that. Thanks. Yeah. And um, if you see my server, Peter, you'll see that, that, you know, we talk about various things, you know, movies and video games in there, really just things in general. And you're welcome to talk to us about things if, you, if you'd like to, Peter. Terrific. I will do that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here, Peter. And, uh, yeah, really good honor to speak to a, a voice actor on these streams it's been an incredible conversation really fun yeah it was yeah it's been amazing yeah all right well you guys in the uk have a great evening and yeah that's those me yeah in the states have a great afternoon <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you and we've also got a few well, other countries yeah, as well. we got China. norway quite in the eu how about that oh yeah norway. europe yeah i'm from denmark <laughs> Canada, Mark, i'm from the czech republic russia yeah. No, I'm just North. I'm in Canada. Canada <laughs> too. Yeah. Well, all over the world. Have a great yeah. rest yeah. of the day for yeah. you. Yeah. But, take um, care. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You take care, Peter. Oh. Wow. That was that was amazing, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. By the way, uh, the geeky, the geeky. Yeah, Maria. Uh, you can just call her Maria. Maria. Yeah, no, Patrick, 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 you can, you can call, you I don't can call him Maria. I've ever met you before. No, I haven't. I uh, haven't met you either. Nice to meet you. <laughs> well, to hear you. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm one of uh, Luke's, uh, I'm assuming, best friends. Oh, yeah, of course you are, Patrick. Yeah. I've known you since 2018. So, yeah, of course you're one of my best friends. And I consider Alex to be one of my best friends, too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, just like how you are oh, one of my best friends, too, Alexander. Thank you, I appreciate that as well. In fact, I, I think I consider all, all people on my server to be to be my very best friends. All of you. Nice. Oh, thank thank you. you. My pleasure. Mm. Yeah. 
uh, because you you guys are you guys are very nice to talk to, very respectful, you know, and uh, really cool people. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Maria, um, I think it's yeah. it's a problem that we ask you, you know, uh, how is how's how's life back in Canada for you now that you've moved back there? How is it for you? Um, actually, it's wonderful right now. That's I'm amazing. talking to you guys from Queens Park. Yeah, oh, cool. um, the trees are starting to change color, um, and it's gonna it's kind of getting kind of getting nippy. Mm. But um, still really wonderful to just walk around. And um, yeah, it's really nice. It's orderly. It's clean. Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah. It's amazing. And, and uh, how was your flight um, back back to Canada how, for you? It was good. Um, good. It was like almost a 24-hour trip. Because, 24 hours, um, wow. Yeah, I mean, it was two planes. One, one was um, actually three. From the Ooh, north wow. to the capital, Lima, and then from Lima to um, Mexico City, and then from Mexico City all the way to Toronto. So um, wow. it was a really, really long trip. Um, and actually, I've been like very, very tired these past few weeks. Understandable. Basically, like I, I arrived, I did like a 15 day quarantine, and then afterwards it was like move to Toronto, start school, and then just. Busy, 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 busy. Yeah. Until last week, uh, that I got, um, I got ill, oh, and that dear. was a good thing actually, because <laughs> huh. it made me like stay in bed and like rest everything that I couldn't rest. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, um, hope everything is well for you now, Maria. Yeah. Really That's nice. great. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. yeah I just go uh, by the way, I have something to say uh, to Maria as well that I've been waiting to say ever since she joined. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Uh, Maria, just wanted to once again praise you and thank you very much for the second batch of Sabe lines that you sent. Oh. Them yeah, I was going to ask you. Yes, yes. That is being used to great effect. It's nice. it's working very well. It's really working out. And But I do say, I will say, um, the audio wasn't the best in terms of mm. how clean it was and stuff i managed to kind of change it up a bit to uh make it top notch but uh the uh, the way you currently your mic is working i think may have improved or something but uh, i definitely think uh, that um that uh, yes the the voice was amazing the voice was amazing but mm. i do think just as in terms of constructive criticism your um a setup could be changed a little bit in a certain way but, but i know you yeah. had some trouble with it as you said yeah. yeah 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 well my mic is uh currently um hibernating since mm. uh yeah I, I and i'm gonna be working with um i just bought myself a, a headset um semi-professional i hope that works better um but yeah, I'm really happy. I was really happy to do it, and I'm really excited to see like the the finished product. Well, it's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking way, forward to it. Too. Reasons... Yes. What? Uh, sorry, what did you say, Luke? I'm looking uh, forward to it as well. I'm looking forward to it as well. Yes, yes, it's it is it is going to be amazing. But also, once again, uh, another reason why I cast you as a station is because I think your voice actually is quite similar to the Padme actress that I have in my projects. That's and cool. obviously Padme Sabe is meant to be Padme's decoy or double, so to mm-hmm. speak. So I think mm-hmm. that's actually a very good match and a very pleasant coincidence. Oh, wow. Cool. Hey, Oppo. I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm so happy that I could help, really. Mm. Go on, Blaise. What are you asking, Alexander? Uh, can I ask, when's the Star Wars Redot coming out? It's first of all, it's not a redub. It is a comic dub. Oh, yeah, but in terms of when it's coming out, that's exactly what I. That that is the same thing as I was talking about to Maria. The oh, Darth nice. Vader. Yes, yes, the Darth Vader comics. Well, uh, here's the plan, place. Right now, I have to do courses that I'm doing in order to uh, later on in a year a year from now uh, apply to university. I have some courses online that I have to. Get. So that's taking priority. I'm doing mm. that right now. Once that's finished, I'm almost on the verge of completing it. Then I'm going to do more stuff. So I'm going to do Spider-Man issue, release it almost immediately afterwards. And then as soon as Spider-Man issue 5 is, that's when the Dark Vader is coming out. So you don't have to wait much longer. I know that it's been over a year. I'm probably very anticipating it, but trust me, it will come all in good time. Yeah. 
just take all the time you need to do Alexander and it'll be worth the wait. Yes, it will. Yeah. Well, anything of Darth Vader comics, it also seems like 2020 is going to be the first year in which I'm not able to release one of my own. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, because, you so, know, the money issues. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so Don, you, you, you probably know what I got on DD this week, aren't you? Yeah, so um, now, Don, in case you're wondering, when it comes to what I got from Amazon, I was able to get one, a film about Hannibal Lecter, which was, of course, um, have you ever seen a film of called, called Manhunter? Because yeah, that's one of the films that I got, you know, on Amazon this week. And um, and also, Don, I was, able, I was also able to get, you know, um, a Disney trilogy as well, Don. Yes. Hey, can you guess what trilogy it is, Don? What trilogy is it? Well, um, it's of course none other than no, 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 yeah, because I got a dual look American cycle today. Oh, uh, Don, I think it's on your microphone. I think it's buffering at your end. Hmm. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to um, leave because I'm in the middle of the park. That's okay, Maria. And, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, because Blaze was like, come on in. You got you to gotta come to the Discord. And I'm like, oh, I'm coming. But it's like, <laughs> I'm in the middle of the park and like I'm talking to the phone and people are like walking by. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> understandable. It's a very interesting. Yeah, it's a very interesting view. Yeah, I'm gonna have to leave too because I'm a bit busy. So that's I'm okay, Patrick. Well. Yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah, you, you, you two both, you, you take care then. Yeah, have a lovely day. Yeah, guys, have a lovely week. Yeah, you too, Thank Maria. Thank you so much for having me again. Maria. Yeah, I'll drop take by care. another time. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome to. Yeah. Well, Take care, Maria. Have a lovely rest of your day. Yeah, take care. Thank you. You too. Bye, everybody. Take care. See you, Maria. Take care. Oh, and oh, Patrick too. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for that that super chat thing. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um. So. I look. I got a good idea. What idea? Let me invite Yui Lovenfall since he's active on Twitter. Well, what? Yeah. Try and see if he's available. Yeah. Please do. Who are you inviting? You really went for oh, Alexander, you know, Spider Man from PS4 game. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, just. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, I'm he'll be tweets. he'll be available, of course. Depends on how busy he is, is really. All right. Nice one. Um. So, yeah, Don, I think I think your mic was a bit was a bit, you know, quiet for some reason early when you when you were speaking. I don't know why. It sounded like uh, back in now. I will. Oh, oh, hold on. I think um, it sounded a bit clearer then, Don. So now, Don, when it comes to your recent videos on YouTube, you of course had a very unfortunate experience watching a Rob Zombie film, didn't you? Yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, his newest one. And um, would you say oh. this film is the nail in the coffin for you watching any more films by him? Yeah. Because um, apparently, this is, this is this is now your worst film of the year, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't think I've seen a Rob Zombie film like worse than Thirty One. Hmm. Would you say that his worst film is 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 Halloween Two Director's Cut that he did? Well, if it's the director's cut version, then yes. Yeah, because um, you give it zero out of ten, like I do, don't you? Yeah, the theatrical cut also stinks, but I give that theatrical cut a three out of ten. Yeah, because frankly, the theatrical version. Because frankly, yeah, well, the theatrical version doesn't have that ending scene, does it? The stupid ending scene, does it? Yeah, but there is. Yeah, but if there's one good thing about the director's cut ending, at least the annoying version of Laurie dies. Yeah, I hated Laurie in the in those remakes. She was very annoying. That, that I, that I wish they did keep in the theatrical cut. Yeah. Well, I see that Susie's drawn us again, guys. She's like, you know, near the door for some reason. Usually, oh, guys, right? She tends to come in my room. I'm, you know, like saying hello to me. She's yeah, adorable. I will admit, and, I, and another director's cut change I did like was um, 
was a Brackett's reaction to finding Andy Andy dead. Yeah. Like. Hmm. Oh, you, you know, speaking of horror oh, films yeah. as well, as well, Don. I was able to pick up um, the first three Scream films and one from this year on Blu-ray. Nice. I unfortunately couldn't find Scream Four, but hopefully I will do eventually one day. All right. Yeah, and also as well the original Charles Play film as well from nineteen eighty eight as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When when it comes to nineteen ninety eight, eight Don, would you say a film film of that year was Die Hard? Of nineteen eighty eight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and what's also cool is I also yesterday I was, I was also able to get Die Hard two on Blu Ray. Nice. Uh, so you're collection complete now or yeah because, yeah yeah one? yeah because Donna, i'm okay. not i'm not i'm not buying the fifth movie of course yeah good now you got the first four movies and you can just keep it that way in my opinion the only four films yeah in my opinion a fifth one didn't happen that's what i like to pretend yeah yeah, yeah but we never speak of that one yeah because yeah, that, that, that third film much. was garbage wasn't it that's a, bad, yeah. that's a bad sequel where every single member of the fan base agrees yeah where there's no split opinions yeah, I know. I know that many people universally hate the fifth movie, like how I hate it, of course. Yeah, I can't even think of a single person that thinks Die Hard Five is a great sequel. Yeah, and also nobody uh, likes it. Yeah, and Don, you'll also be happy to know as well that I was able to get buried on Blu-ray. You know, buried. Yep. Yeah, I was happy to find that movie, and when it comes to Disney classic, I was able to get you know um. Have you seen a Disney film called Bolt, Don? Bolt. Yes, I have actually. Yeah, I think it's one of the underrated ones, actually, in my opinion. Bolt. Sure, it, it sure is. Yeah, I got. I've got. I, I also saw God Sent Hunter Back Not to Down on Blu Ray as well. Yes, and one of the most underrated Disney films ever. Definitely. I also saw God Sent Hercules, the animated Hercules. Another underrated gem. Yeah, that's one of my one of my childhood Disney classics that I saw actually, and um, also um, Milan as well. Yep. I love Milan, yeah, the original one. Yeah, don't, yeah, and, um, don't, and, um, don't worry, guys. Uh, yeah, don't worry, make. guys. It's the it's the original movie, not the the awful remake from what I've heard of it. Yeah, the remake, yeah, the it, 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 it is the worst remake I've ever seen from Disney. Yeah, well, I'm not going. The to, I'm not going to watch I've it. Seen from Disney is the Lion King. Well, I'm not going to watch Milan remakes from. So yeah, I'm out of that. The Lion King's the worst remake to me. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be watching, you know, any more remakes by Disney because I'm, you know, boycotting Disney. So yeah, right, Good. Stealth Gamer, why are you asking me about 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 an MCU question about Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine? I'm retired. Yeah, I'm yes, retired, like, I'll just check I think out it's. I don't care. I get it's obviously set before Logan, but please just let Hugh Jackman's version retire. Yeah, for God's sake, right? Because when Hugh Jackman was, was promoting Logan, he very clearly said he was done with the role. Yeah. Like, and people are like, I want to see him wear the yellow costume. The reason why he didn't wear the yellow costume in the movies is because the movies are supposed to be more mature and serious. Yeah, exactly. That's why he never wore the suit. Yeah. So yeah, I'm because so, this wasn't a children's version of the character. Yeah. And it's really annoying how people start asking me about MCU to his day. It's really annoying me. Like, yeah, I mean like, I mean I mean, how many times like, have I have I said I'm not not watching the MCU anymore? Same here, like they should know, like, you and I are done with the MCU. Yeah, it's really annoying me now. Uh, I'm done with the MCU as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it, yeah, yeah, in my, really in, in my opinion, in my opinion, the MCU's dead. Absolutely. Yeah, like she, Hulk, she Hulk was the final blow to the entire MCU for good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've seen many clips of it, you know, via YouTubers. I've, I've been watching and reviewing it, and, yeah, it looks like, an, I, I think it's probably the worst Marvel show of all time. I think and the fact, that Bruce, funny, and the fact that literally in that show, Bruce Banner apparently goes into exile, just ruins his happy ending. Yeah, and apparently, Don, somehow he's able to heal yeah. his his permanent arm injury as well. He's able to heal it, even though the what? injury is permanent. Yeah. Because, <laughs> right, you know, it, it botches the law of the stones, because whenever you get hurt by an, an Infinity Stone, guys, the damage is permanent. Whereas, somehow, this is retcon, right? Yeah, like... Yeah, apparently, like, this makes it look like... Endgame like, was nothing. That, that'll, yeah, like, as if they could have just revived oh, Tony. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Really is. And, of course, the worst thing of all, twerking. Yeah. In MCU. Yeah. I still think of that meme of it I made. 
Yeah, yeah, that was actually a much better version than where you, where you included Han Cumber for leaving Cat in the Hat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Blaze. Yeah, put, yeah, that's yeah, be hilarious. Yeah, I put in the only funny scene in the movie, actually. I think that, that quote's like a meme, isn't it? You know, you're fired. Yeah, like, that's probably... Yeah, the boss was actually the only funny thing of the cat in the hat, as much as I hate that film. Yeah, I hate the film, so I think, I think it's the worst one based um, on a book, yeah. I was going to forget that yeah. she, uh, she Hulk violated some. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, of course. I think it's episode four. I think I don't. I don't really know. She, 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 she basically, you know, assaulted people. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, I can't even. Makes me hate the character yeah, now. I need to make a meme out of that clip next. Yeah. Uh, honestly, honestly, the fact that she Hulk violated someone, it should have gotten the show cancelled. Yeah. Like she, like she Hulk in the comics is actually likable and actually does stuff. Yeah, I, I, I would also take the like well Marvel Superheroes games version she York as well over this version as well. You know what? I'm gonna check out the episode four and let's see how bad it is quickly. <laughs> well, Blaze, Blaze, ju Blaze, just just watch Mike's review. Yeah, I, I'm waiting for the ne next one, so that's why. Yeah, just get ready for Mike Mike's review. Yeah, and oh, oh yeah, you know what, you know when it comes to figures that I got stayed on, I was able to get a figure of Ripley from it from Alien as well. Nice. And also the, the Ed, and also the Ed to an Robocop as well. Sweet. Right. Yep. Let's see how bad this episode is. <laughs> and also from Mandalorian, I was, I was able to get figures of Fennec Shand and Moth Gideon as well, from Black Series of Star Wars figures. Right. Mute? Nice. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, what, so what do you plan to watch next on your, on your schedule, Don? Well, I'm, um, I'm going to be reviewing the, a film called The Blair Witch Project tonight. And, oh yeah, I've heard about movies. It good. Well, be... well, it's. I think it's kind of overrated, but mm. it's going to be premiering on Monday, and then yeah. Sunday, and then Sunday I'm going to be filming my review for the original 1977 Hills Have Eyes. And, oh yeah, uh, that's going to be that's going to be posted Tuesday. This this um this week I plan to watch a film I plan to do that's not a horror film for the Halloween horror series, but I feel like it. But I feel like it should still count as one called um, 1984 starring John Hurts. Oh, yeah, I've heard about movie it was in, yeah. Yeah, so, I should check the one I out. Mean, I mean, I did review Requiem for, Requiem for a Dream for the first season of Halloween. Yeah, you did, yeah, I saw that. And, even though it's not a horror film, so. Oh, and you know, speaking about film, Don, I got that, I got that on DVD as well today, you know, 4K and Blu ray. Really? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually going to make them. Um, with my 1984 review, I'm gonna actually make that the punish punishment from future me for reviewing first watching Craptivity. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, I just I need to, something. I need to bring my future me back. Yeah, because I've, hasn't he only paid in a Craptivity ramp review, Don? Yeah. But, yeah. But I'm bring, but I'm gonna bring him back. Yeah, yeah. And in case you're wondering, Don, you know, of course, um, your future self inspired me to do that for my trash talks. Yeah, which is pretty cool. And what the hell? So, when it comes to um, why is the hair changing all the time? What the hell? Yeah, that's how bad it is, Blaze, isn't it? Oh my goodness! And just so you I know, the... and just so you know, Don, Wrecking for a Dream and um and Black Swan are the only Aronofsky films I'm going to order and keep that way. I'm not going to watch any more of his uh, movies ever. Well, um. The only ones I'll ever watch from him are Requiem, The Wrestler, Black Swan. Is a wrestler any good to watch? Yeah, the, yeah, it's one of Mickey Rourke's best roles. Oh, nice. So even though it's by director, yeah, it's actually, you, would you say it's good despite yeah, being by director you don't like anymore? Yeah, this was before Mother. So. Oh, good. And um, it also stars Marissa Tomei, and she actually does a good performance, a better performance than Anne May, I will say that. Would you say it's your favorite role of Marissa Tomei, Don? Yeah. That's cool. I'll probably check out then, yeah, see how she is. Because I do like her a lot more in Anger Management with Adam Sandler more than the MCU as well, actually, as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll be sure to check out The Wrestler, and that might be it for me when it comes to Aronofsky's movies. Because, yeah, I'm not going to be watching Mother. Yeah. I refuse to watch Mother. However, I am going to still see The Whale just because it stars Brendan Fraser. Yeah, just well... to see Brendan Fraser yeah. in another film again. Yeah, it doesn't really interest uh, me, that movie, to be honest, but, you know... Hmm. Let me know how it is. I think, I'll, I think I'll give it a chance as well. Like, I just want to see Brendan Fraser back on the big screen again after so long. Mm. Yeah. Because he did not deserve to have his career shut down. Yeah, Paul Brendan. 
But yeah, I, I refused. I, 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 I refused to watch Motherboard because I heard it was really, really bad. Yeah, it is, it, it is really that bad. Oh, and Don, I, I also as well told Ozzy as well why you know, it transfers Shadow as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know the infamous oh God, scene that is, they made made you walk out of the cinema, Don. Yeah. And it, and it was so bad you you couldn't say a word, could you? Yep. Nope. Like just so disgusting and terrible. Yeah. Yeah, that's just very devastating with how I did that, really. And yeah, in, the in, in the future as well, Don, I'm thinking as well about, you know, like one day doing, you know, like um, collection videos where I show my Blu-rays for certain franchises or categories. Yeah. Because didn't you do like a collection video showing your Blu-rays? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I did. Yeah, because I might do a similar, similar thing to what you did, where I basically show my blue as separate a franchise like Star Wars or MCU or um or of a DCEU. Yeah. Or, or maybe as well, you know, a series of films by a director, for example, Spielberg or like Tim Burton, Christopher Nolan. Yeah. I could probably do oh that. Oh my goodness. Because I do. I actually own lots of blue as by Spielberg actually. And, and the CGI yeah. is so bad in this. Wow. Yeah, and and today yeah. as well, Don, I, I actually picked up a film by Spielberg called Bridge of Spies. You ever seen Bridge of Spies, Don? No, I haven't. I'd recommend it. I think it's one of his underrated ones. Tom Hanks in it. Hey, Shadow. Yeah. Yeah, boys. I'm, I'm sending you something cursed. Oh, uh, and, 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 as well, and as well, Don, I also as well picked up War of the World as well from 2005 as well. Oh, yeah. I think that movie is also very underrated. It is. Yeah. I mean, Dom, when it comes to that movie, have you got a favourite scene from World War Wars 2005? Well, um, probably the tripods. Yeah, I mean, my, my favourite scene is probably the first attack scene. And would you also say that a main highlight is, is of course, John Williams' music in that movie? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty scary, isn't it? It is. And you know when it comes to um, finding a DVD, Don? Well, today, when I got home... Um, I I decided to look in my pile in in the cupboard downstairs at you know any see if there's any Blu-rays which have been lost and um, sadly I found a film which you know I got back in like early 2014 to to watch this film for the first time and it's it's an MCU film but I do not like Don and it's, it's of course um I found it and that's um Iron Man three I found it oh god yeah the MCU film does not need to exist in my opinion yeah. Yeah, I found it, it today in my cupboard, guys, and uh, yeah. Like, so because none of the none of the other films ever reference this, they never bring it up. Yeah, even the disc has like some fingerprint markings on it too. Yeah, but when you know. So yeah, I've not watched it since I first saw it when I was younger, guys. And but you know what? Like people, Next year, guys, I'm doing an MCU. Can, yeah, go on, Dom. People can say Iron Man Two sucks, but Iron Man Two had a. Purpose. That movie introduced several characters. That movie introduced War Machine. That movie introduced Black Widow, and that movie introduced Nick Fury in an actual role. Yeah, a big role. Yeah, and it also in, and it also introduced Happy Hogan. Yeah. To be honest, when it comes to Iron Man Two, I've actually going to appreciate it a lot more compared to recent things. Real, to be honest. So that so that movie actually so two actually has a purpose to exist. Yeah. In fact, Don, would you say Iron Man Two is an underrated film? Yeah, I don't think it deserves to be really hated. I mean, well, I don't, I don't, I don't hate it by any means. I just think the villains are weak, in my opinion, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's just my opinion, really. And um, yeah. yeah. So this means, Dom, that you know, next year when I do my MCU marathon for reviews, I can review this, can't I? I'm on free. Nice. I can give it a rewatch, and you know, um, see if my opinion is going to change since I lost it and I did not like it. So yeah. Hmm. Still a big surprise, but I found it, though. What's up, Blaze? Um, after stream, check what the ward I sent you. It's really cursed. Okay, I'll, I'll check. But yeah, so so yeah. In case you're wondering, Don, next year I'll be doing an MCU review marathon. Nice. Of only the, the Infinity Saga, or just so you know, just that only. Because mm. I, I of course already reviewed many many of the Phase Four stuff, you know, and um, so yeah, it's gonna be Infinity Saga reviews. And I'll also be showing nice. a video or showing, of course, my Blu-rays for the MCU as well. So it'll be really fun to do. So, yeah. And 
So, Dom, when it comes to American Psycho, have you watched that movie? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I mean, do you think it's a great movie? Yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous. It's pretty crazy and ridiculous at times. But very, it's still yeah, pretty great. It's very graphic, isn't it, in many areas, too. Yeah. And did you also hear it had a very bad sequel, Don? It did. Uh, I did not see it. Yeah, Dom, please. I watched it this week. It is abominable. And Mila Kunis is also pretty terrible in the film as well, Mila Kunis. I mean, if you thought she was bad in Judas Judas Ascending, wait to see her in this. Because, yeah, Judas Judas Ascending sucked, didn't it, Don? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to that movie, Don, what would you say was... I mean, what what would you say are are your main bad quality with with Judas Ascending? Just the choreography is terrible. Yeah, it was. Pretty bad, yeah. And um, also, did you also find Eddie, Red- Eddie Redman's character annoying, his villain character? Yeah. Yeah, especially that famous scene, the, the infamous scene where he yells go for no reason. Because mm-hmm. at first he's really calm, then he, then he abruptly yells go! <laughs> <laughs> That was just, you know, terrible, really. But I like Eddie Redman yeah, yeah. more in the theory of everything, guys. My favorite role of Eddie Redman, you know, Stephen Hawking. Yeah, and I found and I found Jupiter just to be a really stupid protagonist. All she all she did in the movie was, was just whine and complain. That's all she did. That's all she did in the film. One guy I did like though was Sean Bean's character. Oh well, he he was just a knockoff of Han Solo, really. At least his character didn't die this time. Yeah, it, that, that's actually one or two films in that, in that year in, in which he did not die. The other one, of course, was The Martian. Yeah. You were seen The Martian, dog, because I saw it the other week. It was really good. No, I, did. no, I didn't, but um, he also didn't die in Silent Hill. Yeah, I, I don't think he died in, in that first Percy Jackson film either, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah because he's known for dying a lot in lots of films, isn't he? Yeah, and um, the first Silent Hill is actually one of the few good video game film adaptations. The, the oh, sequel nice. sounds a little revelation. The sequel is really terrible, though. Oh, dear. That's not good. Yeah, just only mm. only watch the first one. Mm. Speaking of ho- it that way. Yeah, speaking of horror things, Don, Small Bastards and Evil Dead. Nice. So I'll be definitely looking forward to that, and you told me there's nothing bad in the film on franchise, is there? Nope. All of them, all of them are good. Yeah, and can you and um and also guys, don't to me to give you hints what um what half franchise I'll be watching after Evil Dead. Right. Okay. Here we go. Mm. What's this <clears> okay. Hi, Georgie. Aren't you gonna say uh, hello? Uh, it. Yeah, it. Stephen King's it. I'll be watching, guys. You know the the three hour mini series with Tim Curry, and then of course the duology with Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise. Yeah, I'm like, I prefer the remake. Chapter Chapter one was good. I didn't really like chapter two. What, the 2019 one? Yeah. Yeah, I heard that, you know, um, it didn't have very good reviews from critics. You have a second one, but, you know, still, you know, a decent sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought it was all right. Yeah. I won't spoil anything, but the ending kind of ruined it for me. Oh, dear. And uh, have you seen the miniseries Shaw, Don? With Tim yeah. Curry? Yeah, like the, I have like kind of the same criticisms as Duology. The first half with the kids is good. The second half in the miniseries with the adults, I don't like. Mm. Yeah, that is not good at all. Oh dear. I only like the scenes with the kids. Mm. Yeah, me too. Well, um, I'll be sure to see, I'll be checking out because thankfully I found a way to watch the whole three hours of that series, which is cool. So I'll be. I will look forward to that and I'll, I'll be especially excited to see Tim Curry, of course, yeah. Because he's a great actor, Tim Curry. I mean, I loved yeah. him, I loved him, of course, in Home Alone 2 and, and also for um, Rocky Horror Picture Show as well. Oh, yeah. He really can sing in Rocky Horror Picture Show, can't he, guys? He's a very good singer in that. Yeah, he sure can. Yeah, and in terms of voice work, I do love him as the Goblin King in, in that Scooby-Doo movie as well. Animated movie, you know, Scooby-Doo and the Curse of Goblin King thing, it's called. Yeah. yeah, that was a very good anime movie. I saw it when I was a kid. It was really good. Have you guys ever seen that anime movie? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it. 
cast. Yeah, me neither. I've not seen it quite some time. It's got a great voice cast. For example, one of the villains is a magician called Krudsky. He's wife by Wayne Knight. Mm-hmm. And I think there's also as well a shop owner as well um, called, called um, who's voiced by Wallace Shawn, which is pretty cool. See, it's got a great cast of actors, yeah, and um, I should probably watch it one day. Yeah. Because I really like Scooby-Doo. Great franchise. It's a shame we had a really bad one from a couple of years ago. You know, Scoob. Scoob sucked. Uh, tell me about it. Garbage. It was so <laughs> bad, I'd rather watch a lot of action films from the early 2000s over it. Yep, that is definitely saying something. Yeah, because I don't like the first one in 2002. I prefer Monster Unleashed far more. The sequel, in my opinion, was, be- was better, but I'd rather watch the first one over Scoob. Mm-hmm. should check out Weird Gamer Kid 3000's question. Well, there's already been a crossover, haven't there? Have you know, Freddy and Jason, haven't there? But, you know, wonder who else could crossover. Yeah, like, um, there was actually going to be a sequel to Freddy vs. Jason where Ash actually appeared, but it got cancelled because oh, Bruce dear. Campbell had problems with New Line Cinema, so... Oh, dear. You see, the thing is, Don, right, um, it's, it's cool that you mentioned Ash because um, I've seen the clip of Ash's post-credits cameo in the Evil Dead remake in 2013, right? And... Um, in the yeah. comments, someone said, like, in the comments, imagine if this camera was at the end of Freddy vs. Jason. That would be cool. Like, however, <sighs> however, that, however, the crossover series with Ash is actually a comics book series. Oh, that nice. It takes place after the Freddy vs. Jason movies. So. Hmm. so, so basically, your idea of a crossover it had an afterlife, didn't it? The way we're planning is still an afterlife, didn't it, as a comic? Yeah, so, yeah. kind of. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah. Oh, well, would like to see it in live action, bro. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would have loved to see that in live action. That would have been killer. I mean, you've already said that you would like Freddy vs. Jason to have a sequel, uh, wouldn't you? Um, Heck yeah. Yeah. Or I'd just like, or I'd just like to see even... Or I would even like to see Jason and Michael face off next. That'd be cool. And when it comes to, you know, the Friday 13 franchise, Don, have you, have you got a personal favorite movie in that franchise? Jason and Lance. Welcome back, Alexander. Jason Lib's Don. Yes. Nice. And how about uh, Nightmare on Elm Street? Have you got favorite film in that franchise? I would say I'm. it's a tie between the first film and Dream Warriors. Oh, nice. Is Dream the third one? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's also the one where the franchise should have ended. Yeah, because I think you said that apparently, you know, when they... Um, they made they made Freddy Krueger comedic in after what well, after a third one for some reason. Yeah, yeah they, they, the fourth one, the fourth one was wasn't terrible, but it wasn't pretty unnecessary. Hmm. I mean, I mean, look, five look. and six suck. Hmm. Yeah, especially yeah. six. Hmm. Yeah, look, they they, they turned Freddy Krueger into a live action cartoon. Oh dear, I've like, not got a reverse comic, GS Pen, you know. When you watch Nightmare on the Street, prepare for Five and Freddy's Dead. I'll be ready, don't worry. Because yeah. their franchise, I will, be, well, yeah, I will be binge watching, no question. Definitely looking forward oh, yeah, to doing that. Per- oh. And hopefully you avoid the remake. What, the one from 2010? Yeah. yeah. Would you, would you say, would, is, would you say that that's one. Um, one of the worst ones, Don? Or, or is one of the worst, is the worst one in your opinion one, one of the classic films? Yeah, it's um, it is the worst of the franchise as a whole, and it's probably the worst slasher remake yet. Oh wow! Oh dear! Oh, and you're also yeah. happy to know, Don, that like, I got the I got um, the two thousand three remake of TCM today as well. Nice. That's probably the only Texas Chainsaw movies I own are the nineteen seventy four original and the remake duology. Do you reckon you'll buy the second one eventually one day? Second film. Yeah, if I can find it anywhere. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can get them too. Yeah, I'd love to get like that's, the first two. That's the, that's the only other TCM film I plan to buy. Yeah, and um, I also I also can't believe that you know the next the next generation you know the fourth one actually achieved so impossible to become my my worst movie I've seen in my life now. Can't it's believe not that. Surprising. Yeah, because it was abominable, weren't it? And there was also nothing good about it at yeah. all, in my opinion. Nope. Yeah. Oh, Ozzy's back was nice. Hello, come back. Oh, okay, I'm back. I was very hungry. Ah, oh, have you eaten, eaten something nice, Ozzy? Yep. Good, good. 
in case you're wondering, Ozzy, we were just talking about, you know, horror characters, and uh, I was saying to Dom, but I'm going to be watching, you know, um, the Elm Street films in the future one day on Friday 13th. Oh, nice. I'm yep. going to watch Elm Street right now. Nice. Just um, be, when you binge watch Friday 13th, do be prepared for parts. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. 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 I've, I've heard... Yeah, the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. I've heard that, you know, um, of course, um, that... Um, that Jason takes a boat to Vancouver, as you guys call it, is apparently, is apparently the absolute worst of a franchise. Yeah, yeah. It really was like after I saw the movie back in 2017. It literally ruined, it, it literally ruined what could have been a phenom a phenomenally perfect Friday 13th movie. Have Jason go to New York, killing New Yorkers. That would have been a very cool sequel. Yeah. No, but um, instead he got an atrocious movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, where Jason's on Absolutely show. nothing good about it at all. Mm. Yeah, where Jason's on a boat with a bunch of unlikable teachers and high schoolers. And mm. The reaction to after and he was, dies uh, in the sewer, pathetically. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the aftermath of me watching um, Jason takes a boat to Vancouver was really funny. Mm. I, was with my friend, I was with my friend that day in 2017. We were watching. Oh, I, I, was I, like, I was just like, what the heck did I just watch? And then my Can't friend blame him. just disc out of the player and he chucked it out the window <laughs> like, people, a lot of people say jason goes to hell's the worst but personally like jason goes to hell is bad but it's the i think of all the bad friday 13 sequels it's probably the only one i have fun watching mm. yeah because like i i really like how gory it is and has at least a protagonist and um it also has a pretty great setup for freddy versus jason so it's so technically, that's the only one after Jason lives I mm. still find canon. So because that, uh, that ending has a setup of a crossover, does that confirm that Freddy and Jason are, are in the same universe? Pretty much. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And, uh, and uh, look, another Friday movie you have to be um, ready for is um, The New Blood. Okay, I'll, I'll say a word for it. And... Um, yeah, I think, like, and also, Ozzy, in case you're wondering, we're, we're also talking about, you know, what Scooby-Doo, and also about how awful Scoob was as well. Yeah, that movie was crap. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, Alexander, sure. Alexander, are you into Scooby-Doo? No. I mean, do you reckon you'll probably watch Mimic the Cartoon one day? Mm, I doubt it. I truly doubt it at the moment. It is a pretty good franchise. I mean, you may enjoy it if you, if you like mystery and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I know, I know you like mystery films, don't you? I certainly do. It's my favorite genre. Well, yeah, there you go. Because Scooby Doo is about you know mysteries involving you know you know like um you know like um you know strange things. Really, it's pretty good. Mhm, mm mhm. Yeah, and but yeah, just about, but please for your own sake and, and please don't watch Scoob from twenty twenty. It's terrible in my opinion. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, for your own sake, avoid it. I mean. I think one thing that it does, which is really bad, is that it makes the mistake of trying to set up a shared universe. Yeah, but failed miserably. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it will never happen. I, I, don't, I don't think it will, because I, I think they say they cancel the sequels, apparently, and the follow-ups. Good. Yeah. And Good. when it comes to a film which sets up a shared universe, oh, Don, have you ever seen uh, um, the 2017 remake of The Mummy with Tom Cruise? No. Well, for your own sake, please avoid it. Don't ever watch that movie. Because it does, it does the same gonna, thing, Don. You're going to regret it if you do. And don't, don't talk what's really stupid, Don, is you know how the opening of a film has the Universal logo? Yeah. Well, well the logo then turns into a Dark Universe logo. That's so lame. Yeah, and, that, and that's, it's just a stupid move because this shared universe hasn't even started yet. Uh, sorry. And now it's over. And some yep, it's never going to happen now. Yeah, because, yeah, because thankfully, guys, due to how bad the film was, all the planned films got scrapped. Aha! Yeah, wait, what? Okay, I don't know why I saw um, Johnny Depp was star in a Invisible Man movie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe, um, I don't know if that aired or not. Ozzy, I heard about that film. Yeah, I just heard Johnny Depp was going to star in it. Yeah. But don't ask me which character, because I don't know. Me neither. Now, Ozzy, when it comes, um, Blaze, we're talking about the Mummy 2017 with Tom Cruise, which was really bad, Blaze. Oh, yeah, Ozzy, just out of curiosity, um, how did you first watch the film? Did you watch it in the cinemas or did you watch it via streaming or something? I watched it in the 
watched it streaming. Oh, and um, and how did you react when you were watching it? I'm just like, what am I watching? Yeah, it was terrible. Just watch a Brendan Fraser film instead, guys. Although, in my opinion, The Mummy 999 is, is, is an example of a film that did not need sequels. Nope, should have just been one movie. And one yeah, movie alone. just one film, because the second film, unfortunately, does bring back The Mummy from the first film and makes it defeat Pointless, sadly. And the third and one is the third one a dumb to fire. And the third one is an absolute dumb to fire as well. Hated the third one. But I watched that over 2017. Thanks to Brendan Fraser. And so, yeah. And just so you know, Don, tomorrow I'll be filming my video on why um, the Hitman on Bodyguard did not need a sequel. Good. Can't wait for that. Yeah, because Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard was just abominable, wasn't it? Yo, it really was. Yeah. I think it's one of those films where, you know, um, Ryan Reynolds using his Deadpool aspects in a comedy film were overshadowed by the bad thing, wasn't it? Definitely. Because not only was, was that a thing, but, you know, his character got bullied a lot and abused, didn't he, in the movie? Yeah, for no good reason. And, of, co and of course, the film also achieved the impossible of, of making me hate a Samuel L. Jackson character as well. Really? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I've never watched that movie ever Just just, just watch the first one, Ozzy, you know, him and his bodyguard. Because it, it stars, yeah. you know, Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson, and Gary Oldman plays a villain. Because the thing is, is that I don't want to hate any any character that Samuel Jackson has played. Me That's neither, but, sa but sadly this film did that because it made his character extremely unlikable and an absolute pain to watch because he, cause he was he was always, you know, whining and complaining all the time, being really mean to Michael for no reason whatsoever. Ever. Yeah. They, they pretty much made him another Penelope from Ralphric's internet. Oh, yeah, hated Penelope. Goodness me. Oh, yep. And it doesn't help either that she's played by an actress we all hate. Yeah, I hate Sarah Sullivan. Yeah, and um, when it comes to. Um, and also, as well, Don, what's also stupid is that, you know, um, even though Michael, Ryan's character, rescues his wife, why does, does Darius hate him? It's never explained. Yeah, and also, how did she know who Michael is? I have no idea. Yeah, but here on Vodigar was, was, was a blend of seriousness and comedy. Yeah, it was a really fun film to watch, in my opinion. Really fun. <laughs> and in my opinion, just one film alone. And just so you know, Don, in the video, I'll also talk about how, how I first learned to the film's existence, because I, I first learned to the films by seeing your Instagram post about it. Yeah. Because I had no idea that those films existed until you posted on Instagram you are going to watch in a sequel. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and then I'll say as well that, you know, um, I then heard your thoughts on it when you included it in your top 11 worst films of the year video that you did. And and Don, how do you how do you ram the films out of 10? Go. So what do you say, Alexander? I gotta go. Oh, well, it's, what, are you, are you, do you need to go on mute or do you mean go for good? Probably go for good, most likely. Well, most likely. If, if that's the case, then it's, it's been lovely talking to Alexander, and thanks for, you know, asking questions to Peter Jessup as well. No problem. I have new questions I just came up with, actually, for him, so... Yeah, if, if, he, come, he, if, he, comes back, if he comes back next time, you can ask him, can't you? Yes. yes. So, um, yeah, it's been nice talking to you, and um, if you're free tomorrow, I'd love to talk to you again if you'd like me to. Yes, lovely. I should do just that. Lovely. Well, yeah, you take care, Alexander. All right, thank you. Yeah, take care. Take care, Alexander. Take care. Have a lovely day. Bye. Take care. Thanks, so, Don, um, how would you rank the films out of 10? Hitman's, Hitman's Bodyguard, the first one, um, 7 out of 10. Nice. Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, 3 out of 10. Yeah, it's very sad that, you know, um, you give a low score to a Ryan Reynolds movie, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And would you say it's also worse than Green Lantern? Oh, yeah. Definitely worse. Yeah. How about um, worse than Blade Trinity? Even worse than Blade Trinity. Wow. I'm not saying so because I hate Blade Trinity as well. Yeah. And when it comes to uh, to Ryan, Don, have you ever seen the sci-fi film he's in called Life? No. Well, I'd say that you avoid it because it is really bad. It's also by the same director with Morbius as well. Oh, 
Definitely yeah, not. it's it's from 2017, and it's literally a rip off of Alien. Well, I'm definitely not watching it. And the first half of the film is it is it is very boring, and it drags on far too long. But in my opinion, the best part of it is Jake Gyllenhaal and Rebecca Ferguson. But and sadly, Don Ryan gets wasted. He's only like half an hour of film when he, when he gets killed off. But at least on a side, he doesn't play Deadpool in this. Yeah, because Don, as a, as a, as a, what's good about his character is, even when he gets wasted, he's serious, thankfully. No Deadpool, thankfully. No jokes like Deadpool, thankfully. Well, I guess that's one good thing. Yeah. But I'm never going to own it. I watched it on Netflix and I hated it. It was terrible. But when it comes to it, Rebecca, my favorite role of her is her role in Doctor Sleep. Because, yeah, Don, in case you want to watch both of those films, you were shining your doctor sleep as well this week. It was definitely really great to watch. Yeah. I also I also liked... Um, who was this again? Rebecca Ferguson. Oh, yeah, I also liked her in Dune. Yeah, she was great in Dune, yeah. I do also, of course, love her as, you know, Faust in the Mission Impossible films, too. She was great in those, yeah. Um, yeah, my favorite wall of hers was in Doctor Sleep. I mean, have you guys got a favourite wall of Rebecca Ferguson? Yeah, I would say Ross Dad as well. Wait, Doctor Sleep? Yeah, Doctor Sleep. How about you, Don? Doctor Sleep. Nice. And, uh, oh, there's a question from Declan, Don, asking if you've seen a film called Heat. No, I have not. Oh, Don, it's absolutely amazing. It's one of, it's one of the best highest films of all time. Paul, Paul, my favourite highest film ever made. It's, it's just incredible. Yeah. You've got great acting in like uh, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Val Kilmer. Kilmer. It's amazing. I'd recommend it. It's a really amazing movie. And um it was Natalie Portman. Yeah, you've actually got you've actually got Natalie Portman in, in in a role too, in an early stage of her career. You you know before Star Wars, Don? Yeah. And she was actually really good in that, you know, considering this is one of her first roles, I believe, yeah. Pretty cool. I think the earliest role I've seen in her play is her role in Mars Attacks by Tim Burton. So I think it was, was like 992, guys. I think it was 992. Uh, I, can say, I think maybe it was in 96. I, I, I have no idea. Can someone help me out? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, look it up. I'll look it up. I think Ozzy's doing it. Uh, okay. uh, Mars Attack was 1996. 996? Yeah, oh, wow. So you were close at all just 10 years apart, weren't you? Yeah. The movie scared me when I was a kid. I can understand that, yeah, but when I look back, it I think it's actually pretty fun to watch. It's, it's also got a great cast of acting, hasn't it? So many, really, isn't there? And, um, yeah, you got Michael J. Fox. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you've, and uh, Danny DeVito was actually pretty funny in the film as a rude gambler. you got Jack Nicholson yeah. as, a, as a president, yeah. and yeah. Natalie Portman plays his daughter, and also as well, um, I think Pierce Brosnan's, Brosnan's in it as well, Pierce Brosnan. And um, the singer Tom Jones, I think he's also in it as well as himself, which is pretty cool. You, you've got a huge cast of actors in that movie. It's insane, really. And um, a film wasted potential. Good question. There's many I could say really, which I wasted potential. I mean, we yeah, we see Good Trash had a lot of potential and it fell miserably because it, it turned out to be absolute garbage. It was really well hyped by a lot of fans, but for me, it turned out to be just pure garbage. Say screw that trash. Mm-hmm. Yep. Screw that trash. Yeah. Um but yeah, heat I'd recommend Heat Don, it's an amazing movie. If you well, plan to watch it one day. Yeah. I'd recommend it. It was really good. And so 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 when it when it comes to, you know, um, Aside from War of the Worlds, Don, have you got any examples of Spielberg films that you think are also underrated too? So, The Last World. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I think that's my favourite to address about sequels, actually. And um, how about, um, did you say Temple of Doom was underrated on Temple of Doom? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think I saw your comment, yeah, and, um, and, and like you, I don't, think it's a prequel it feels more like a sequel than a prequel yeah definitely i mean what does it do to it? i like a prequel i don't see any hints of being a prequel all in the movie i 
I've always acted like Temple of Doom was a sequel or a prequel. I just call it Indiana Jones 2. Yeah. I'm mean, even, you know, and the, and the way it's marketed is even the second installment, you know, makes you think it's going to be a sequel, you know, and um, and in the Lego games, of course, they, they don't play Temple of Doom first, you play Raiders first, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, whereas, in, of course, like in Indiana Jones 2, you, you play through the first level of Kingdom, a Crystal Skull first, don't you? Then you can choose what, what you want to do next, don't you? Yeah. But I wasn't much yeah. a fan of like Indiana Jones 2, to be honest. Yeah, I hated that game. I hated that game. Yeah. I think mean, that's a game of wasted potential as well, to be honest. Yeah, they could have been movie accurate, but they didn't have to add in giant bosses. Yeah, that made no sense because that, didn't, that did not happen in the movies at all. And, and you want to know the biggest mistake of the game? What is it, Ozzy? Re- removing the boulder chase. Yeah, the, the, yeah, because Dom, they actually cut out the iconic, you know, opening scene of Raiders in, in that game. Yeah. yeah, you start in Marion's Tavern in Nepal in the game when you play for Raider Lost Ark in, in the Lego game. Oh, I was so disappointed when I, when I found that out when I was like, I think, yeah. five? Yeah, I was definitely five years old when I found that out. And I bet you 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 were very sad, weren't you, Ozzy? Yeah, I was disappointed. Yeah, and plus, right, what's also dumb is that um, you know the Kingdom of Crystal score part of the game, guys, right? It's split into three chapters, right, with five levels in the chapters, right? Whereas the, the other three films only have one chapter, not three. That doesn't make sense. Like why not? Because yeah, if you gave three chapters to your films, you could be able to adapt more things from from the films, couldn't you? Like the border chase, for example. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And also the whole giant boss thing was just ridiculous because that did not happen in the movies. Like, because I don't recall Belloc being a giant, li- you know, lightning monster. I don't recall the statue of the Temple of Doom coming to life. I don't recall Donovan being a wind monster or the giant crane thing for, on the train or the Russian colonel being a giant ant monster. And then, of course, Spalco being a, you know, alien and giant lightning thing. Oh, yeah. It, it, so, yeah, the boss fights were very repetitive. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, the gameplay is also very repetitive. Too. It's literally the same format. They don't change like, like the first game did. I want to know the segments I hate the most in the game. Go the on, what is it? Segments. Sorry, what? The vehicle segments. Oh, yeah, they were a pain, too. And, um... They're, they're so repetitive. It drags on and yeah. on and on. Yeah. And I also, as well, hate it as well, how, um... I think the final fight with Spalco in the Kingdom Temple is also very hard to do as well. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I, 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 I remember raid quitting cool. over it. I was raid quitting. It took me a while until I had to go on YouTube to figure out how to beat it. Yeah, I had to ask for help. Yeah, it was hard. What are you saying, boys? What game are we talking about? Like when you're in Dow Jones 2, yeah, boys. Oh, I didn't play that one. I played the first one. Though. Oh, you played the first one? Nice. How was it for you, boys? Pretty cool. Yeah, it was really fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And just just like curiosity, Don, have you, have you been enjoying my, my Indiana Jones reviews so far? Yes, I have. That's great. Would you say that, you know, what I've said is, is what you'd say if you did a review? Yeah. That's cool. And just so you know, Don, on Monday, I'll be posting my last Crusade review. Nice. And sadly, guys, yeah. on Wednesday this week, I'm, I'm going to be re-watching Kingdom of Crystal Skull. Good so, luck. Yeah. yeah, but... To be honest with you guys, I appreciate it a lot more because it's it's sadly, of course, one of the last Indiana Jones film to be made by Luke, you know, Paramount before Disney took over, of course. And ruined everything. And and in case you guys are wondering, of course, I'm not watching the fifth movie. Never am I. Yeah. Uh, Don, are you uh, watching the fifth movie? Well, um, just so you guys won't have to see it. Well, you're a hero, then. Oh, thank you, Don. You're a hero. Because I know I'm going to hate it. Well, I know it's I know it's doomed from the very beginning, you know, because of Crazy Kennedy and also because of, you know, the whole time travel or ridiculousness in it. But, but, uh, but Don, I bet, I bet your rant is going to be way better than the actual movie. Oh, yeah, no question. No question. Easily. Yeah, and later, oh later, later, Don, but because I have no interest in watching Monsters, I'll watch your, your rant about it. <laughs> well, I can't wait. Yeah, and, and Dom, would you say that it's bad from, from the very beginning? Yeah. And, um, it's really bad as soon as it starts. And did, did that film get dumped onto, onto D... Where did it get released on, Don? 
it got dumped to Netflix. Netflix. And it got dumped to DVD. Oh dear. And do you do? You, I assume you watch it via Netflix, of course. And yeah. um, and and it was bad, was it from the very beginning? Was it? Oh yeah. Yeah. But, but, but thankfully, it didn't release for me at Netflix. Yeah, Shadow yeah, was. yeah. You're lucky, Shadow, aren't you? I'm not gonna watch it if it comes out in yeah. the UK anyway. Yeah, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna watch that trash anyway. Yeah, because I think Halloween Two is remade by Rob Zombie killed and any interest I, I'd have in watching more of his films. I mean, because Don, I do plan to check out his, you know, House of Thousand Corpses movies. Yeah. See what I think of those. I know that you like those films, don't you? Know those two of them. Yeah, only the first two. Because I know that you don't like uh, Free From Hell, is it? You don't like that movie, do you? No, that was a very unnecessary sequel. Yeah, because the first movie you covered in your film, as I didn't need a sequel series, was that was There Was Rejects, wasn't it? Yeah, because Rejects ended beautifully. Yeah. Is that your favourite Rob Zombie movie, Don? Yeah. And that, and because of Monsters, you you want him to retire from being a filmmaker now, don't you? Yeah, just go back to making music. Yeah, because... Um, I've only heard his song from, from Matrix's club scene, and that's it. I've heard of his career, and he sounds like a good singer. Wait, isn't Rob Zombie in Walter Chucky movies? Uh, he's his he's music there. I don't know, maybe. Check that's check if he's check if his music's been included in, in the film plays. See for yourself if he's been in, in, in with music. Yeah. Go on, Don. Go on, Donnie, tell us your answer to your joke that you just commented about, you know, what the dads in, in the adult cartoons have in common. Oh, he did, he did. Which film was it, Blaze? Uh, the Ride of Chucky. Oh, nice. I've noticed an underrated film about a Chucky. Yeah, I like it better than a lot of people do. I like it. Yeah. it I, love that I don't movie. think it deserves any, any hate, really. I think the one that deserves hate is, is you know, um, Seed. Seed was yeah, garbage, course, and, 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 also, and, and of course, Colt as well. See, see, then caught in my opinion deserve the hate because I think those songs are garbage. And the, and it was the remake. That's my third worst, yeah. Ugh, all the skits are so bad. Yeah. Luke, you, you know what's, what showed up in the intro on, on Seed of Chucky, right? Mm. Yeah, that was very really disgusting, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, don't like, with def- definitely, yeah. definitely a red flag when you when you when you're opening a movie, isn't it? If you include that horrible intro, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah just absolutely terrible. And yeah, goodness me. Also, also as well, Don, did you have fun? Did did you have, did you have fun watching um my God Power trilogy ranking? I did. Yeah, and yeah, I, I assume you had a lot of fun watching it, and um. Were you also happy that I so I spoke in defence of a third movie? Yeah. Because in my opinion, that movie does not deserve hate. I think it's an underrated movie, but in my opinion, calls the franchise really well. Yeah. And just yeah, a, none, I, none, none of those films deserve that. I think, well, no. The uh, third one, yeah. Uh, the third one did not deserve any hate whatsoever. Yeah, because no question, the first two films are masterpieces, so yeah, in my opinion. And of course, Don here regards him as a, as the greatest ones of all time, don't you, Don? Yeah. And because of, because of that, would would you say that Francis Ford Coppola is your favorite filmmaker of all time, Don? Well, yes, I haven't seen a I haven't seen a lot of his films, only a few, but mm. yeah, because last night, Don, I saw a film he he did called uh, The Rainmaker. Have you seen that movie? No, only ones I've seen from him were The Godfather trilogy, The Outsiders, and Bram Stoker's Dracula. Hmm. I'd recommend the Rainmaker because uh, Matt Damon's really good in it, and so Danny DeVito as well, and Danny Glover. It's a pretty good movie, the Rainmaker. And you've also got, you know, um, Helen from Candyman in, in it. You know, Virginia Madsen. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and also Don, you'll also be pleased to know that in my Candyman ranking, I ranted about the sequels. Well, I can't wait to check that ranking out. Oh, can't wait. Yeah, can't and of rank. course, of course, as well, Don. I also, as well, you know reviewed the second and third one so you don't have to because you don't see them have you no i've only only ones i've seen were the original and the 2021 film oh yeah the 2021. Uh, that was a letdown in my opinion yeah yeah i, I hated that one <laughs> yeah because because um i mean don the reason why i'd say that you should avoid the third film is because it, it really ruins Candyman because it makes him goofy 
Yeah, I've seen enough of that cliche for a lot of other slasher franchises. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't. I really don't know Declan. I've not really watched any any you know John Grisham movies. I'm afraid that I know of. So when it comes to Candyman Don as well, the second film also makes a mistake of trying to humanize him as well <sighs> by giving him a very weird backstory, which which goes against the mystery of his character. You know, he's supposed to be a mysterious character, and, and it ruins the idea, doesn't it? But by humanizing him. Yeah. Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, they, 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 they tried to give Kahneman a backstory, guys. In what in the first movie, we already got given it because it, it mentioned he was a fel he was an artist but got killed, wasn't he? Yeah, I'm reading the the comment Declan told me is telling me about Rob Zombie's Halloween two. Yeah, it's terrible. I'd recommend to avoid Halloween two's remake by Rob Zombie. It's garbage, in my opinion. I don't think I've seen any of Rob Zombie's remakes. I don't garbage. think I want to give him a chance. Just watch the first two films, Ozzy, in the whole franchise from 1989. What must I say you should do? Yeah, I'm going to watch Halloween this month. Yeah, you love Halloween 1988. It's a masterpiece. But yeah. Oh, anyway, guys, so that is Fiat into a stream. So, wow, this has been really fun, hasn't it? Yeah, I got to talk to a lot. Yeah. I got to call yeah. Peter Jessup, and, you know, I've had really fun talking to you guys. It's been really great. So, yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, Declan. If you want to hear my conversation with, with Peter Jessup, then please go back to like you know fifty minutes in, in you know fifty minutes into the stream because he came on at that point in fifty minutes. So yeah, if you guys want to see the, the, the whole conversation, then go to fifty minutes into the stream. Yeah, but yeah, it was really fun talking to him. And yeah, so guys, this is me doing ep last year live episode 91. 91, Wow, it's amazing, isn't it? Now more to a hundred. Um, yeah. so you yeah, know, so you know, so you know, drill yeah. guys. Uh, be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure let us all in the comments uh, what you guys thought of um of today's stream. And um, please go subscribe to these, these special guests who it, the links will be in the description below. Also, be yeah. sure to join Team Prime by pressing subscribe for more videos coming in the future. If you like to be a member, you can join using Peace Lights or you can the description. And we will see you all later. Later. All right. Later. Take care. Bye bye. Are you are you going, Don? Yeah.